Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Shaw Wayans, and you are listening to the Dysfunctional Podcast, these sick bastards. Good evening, dear listeners. Tonight's featured show is brought to you by the leftovers from the Opie and Anthony show. You've tuned in for the soothing and mellow tones of No Filter Paul and the refreshing and nurturing sounds of his wife, Denise. Along with the suave and sophisticated Big A, this comedy trio makes up the Dysfunctional Podcast. And that program starts now. Not this, bollocks! You fucking wanker, play the right one, you twat! Hi! Wait, wait, wait! Fuck you, Paul! I'm opening the show. Yeah. Wanna come play? Mm. 609-891-8391. We're live. And waiting for your call. Yeah. Hey, Big A, tell them where they can watch us. Yeah, baby. You watch us at thefunctionalpodcast.com. What the fuck? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, this is Mama Jim, and you are listening to the the dysfunctional. Uh, the, 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 the. <laughs> <laughs> that was me yesterday. I could not speak for <laughs> The dysfunctional podcast. Oh, running down the highway from Baltimore to, uh, the, to oh, no. New York the other day, and I'm here in Paul and Denise. I, I was in hysterics between uh, exit 4 on the New Jersey Turnpike and exit 11 coming from Baltimore to New York. Hey, it's your old pal, Dr. Steve, and you're listening to the Dysfunctional Podcast with No Filter Paul and Denise and my old friend, Big A. And I'm on your clip. Ah! Hello and welcome to the Dysfunctional Podcast with me, No Filter Paul, and no one else right now. And hello, hello. caller. Hello. Hello. Hey, Lee, how are you? Yeah, 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 I'm all right, I'm all right. How are you guys? Are you still angry? No, we're not angry at all. I think your fans are a little angry, though. <laughs> you know? Well, I don't care about them. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Twitter just blew up where... Yeah. At about 8.20 last week. <laughs> These guys are full of shit. This guy's not calling, you know? But, uh, we don't I care. I'm so sorry. No, what did I do? No, no, no. I, I'm just really pleased you're calling. I mean, big fans. Absolutely big fans. Always have been. Oh. Um, I first saw you, I first noticed you, should I say, in Wayne's World. I lived in England back in 92, I think it was. And, uh, yeah. Then I, you know, then I looked you up, and you're you're in Point Break, and I'm like, wow, this guy likes being a hippie. <laughs> <laughs> were, were you ever worried back then that that was going to be your character in everything you did? Um, well, initially, I mean, you know, I grew my hair because I knew like that I was a freak, and uh, people, you know, when I had short hair, I sort of looked like everybody else, and right. so I grew my hair because I sort of felt like I wanted to make myself different. And right. then after a while, when I started working, then I started being like, oh, my God, am I going to be the guy who's always got the long hair? Right. <laughs> um, but then what, ha- what turned out as it kind of went on was I grew it, I cut it, I grew it, I cut it. Right now it's long. Right. Wow. I mean, yeah, your character in Wayne's World, you know, I there's I just, I just rewatched the the Bohemian Rhapsody scene from the beginning of the movie and you guys are just rocking it up in the back. <laughs> it's like so cool. But yeah, I, I know it was funny. I uh, you know I uh, when we went for the first read through of the movie, I wasn't in the back seat. It was just uh, Mike and the other guy Sean and uh, Mike Deloise. And I said to uh, Mike Myers, I was like, man, I. If you can fit me in the back seat, I really want to be in the back seat. And next script came out, I was back there. And I mean, I didn't know that it was going to be obviously. I, nobody knows anything. I didn't know that it was going to be such a huge right movie or huge scene. But then, then I mean, it was just it was amazing. 
And I had to say, thank God I was back there because I was the only headbanger in that car. Yeah, no one you else. No one else. I could. I was watching. I, no one else knew how to rock it like you were. And I guess they were just. I broke at, it loose. Yeah. Broke it loose. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, I only yeah. I only found out about Wayne's World because I, I was always, I, I grew up in England and I didn't move here till yeah. '94. And uh, I was a huge fan of American TV, and I had these little pen pal type deals going on. And right. they, they were sending me bootleg tapes of Saturday Night Live and In Living Color. And um, wow. I, I think Martin was the other one. I don't remember now. But then, you know, we saw Wayne's World. I mean, Garth getting his hair cut with a vacuum cleaner, hedge, hedge trimmer combination <laughs> was just fucking awesome, you know. And then when the movie came out, they were both big hits, you know, even in England we, where we didn't even have Saturday Night Live, you know. Oh, that's right. I never really realized that. that yeah. It doesn't really, it doesn't play anywhere else in the world, does it? No, I, I don't know if it plays anywhere else, but it, it definitely didn't in England. I mean, I, I went to the David Letterman show a couple of times before he retired, and I had some really good seats, and I saw myself on TV, and I'm like telling my parents, I'm like, hey, I was on TV, and they're like, we know, Sky TV has David Letterman on it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> 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 you know, we saw you in the front. I'm like, okay. All right. Yeah, but... uh. You started with Point Break, right? I saw a couple of movies listed before Point Break on IMDb, but I guess Point Break was the one that you got noticed initially, right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I worked and did a couple of like independent movies before that, uh, very independent, but uh, uh, border on porn. No, it wasn't porn. I <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, I went out to um, LA to help a friend of mine move back and. I went out to dinner with this guy who was a casting director who was casting Point Break. He's like, yeah, are you an actor? I'm like, yeah. Because like, there's this part we've been trying to cast for like a month. So why don't you come in tomorrow? And I went in the next day and did a, what I thought was a terrible job. And then I ended up, by the end of the day, I had the job. And then I lived in L.A. for nine years. I don't recommend it. No. What do you prefer? Oh, no, you prefer I, I you, love LA, but... you prefer eight million people in two square miles, like New York, or eight million people yeah. in a hundred I mean, square if miles? We could, if we could get it in less space, it'd be better. But yeah, two square miles is fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And that, I guess that guy was Tom Fontana, right? Yeah, That's... yeah, the guy who I actually met at a restaurant here, the Empire Diner, and he had just moved back after living in LA. Uh, and uh, and the thing was, he, me, and a couple other guys were going out. We were all going to drive this truck back. But then when I got this job, all of a sudden the whole plan fell apart. And then he ended up like hiring movers. But uh, but but I'd rather be in Point Break than uh, drive a moving van across country. I don't know. Call me crazy. I don't know. Yeah, right. I, I, I'd rather be in a big well, big movie. Well, at they least got remade badly. It was, a, yeah, really. It, 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 at least it was Tom Fontana's furniture you were moving. You know what I mean? It wasn't just you know, <laughs> some other guy that right. came into the diner that bought you know a, a chicken parmesan every Sunday, and you somehow, somehow right. you were in LA moving his shit. You know? Yeah. But uh, you you've done quite a bit. Chicken parmesan. It was a chick herb chicken breast, my friend. Oh wow! You, you did got... your research. But <laughs> you're, 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 you're moving. You're missing the details. Sunday night, right? Yeah. Chicken, right. <laughs> That was a good guess. It's only one out of seven is not bad, right? <laughs> you know, there had to be chicken yeah. involved. It was an Italian. It had to be an Italian diner, or was it a Greek diner or Italian diner? No, yeah. it was. Uh, uh, where, where do you live now? I'm in Jersey, right across the water from the city. Right. So there was this diner, which is it's still there because it's like a landmark, but it's closed right now. Called the Empire Diner on Twenty Second and Tenth. Okay. Um. Yeah. I. Uh, I met Tom Fontana there and two wives. Wow. That's what I'm saying. The place is pretty good for me. Yeah, I mean, it's not my place to involve, get involved in your personal life. I really don't care. I just care how you became famous, but I guess three times a charm on that one. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry, man. I'm sorry. Wow. Yeah. Now I feel like a fool bringing up the personal life. <laughs> No. Don't push me, pal. That's I'll fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely not. I, I'm not even going to go down that road. I, I, I'm just amazed. <laughs> I'm just amazed. Anyway, whatever you want to tell me is fine. But you know, I'm just amazed that the the different lucky meetings, coincidences that kind of led you to where you are now. You know, it's there's there's lots of people that are, are talented that don't get the breaks you got because you're in the right place at the right time. Yeah, and and I tried to say yes as much as possible. Right. You know, of course, things came my way, 
And, uh, yeah, I, the funny thing was, I was, uh, I mean, everything's funny, really. Um, but yeah. I was working at this other restaurant that it was the, I had done, so I was like 21, I think. And I had just become like a waiter. I was a busboy and I was going to acting school. And, and then I, they made me a waiter at this place. And I was making so much money that I took like three vacations over the winter and they fired me. I mean, over the <laughs> and the fireman. And then at the, as I was walking out of that place, a buddy of mine who worked there looked at me and goes, you know, you should go see my friend Doug at the Empire Diner. I think the Empire Diner would be good for you. And then I go to the Empire Diner where I meet Tom Fontana, who, like, I mean, I didn't even, you know, I didn't know who he was. Right. But I was just, like, uh, doing a play, so I gave everybody flyers to come see the play because you need to get people to come see a show when you're doing it. Right. And then he, he came, and like, it was the last night, and one of the, uh, the the director comes out and goes, there's a producer in the audience from St. Elsewhere, Tom Fontana. And I, was like, and I knew his name right. because he paid with a credit card. But and so I was like, wait a minute, he's a producer? And then he and I, through that, became really good friends to this day. He and I just went to see uh, The Father with uh, Frank Langella last night. Oh, wow, that's so awesome. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's personal life. Nah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. You, you know what it is? You read all this bullshit on the internet, of which 5% is true, you know, and um, and it says he, he he doesn't like to talk about his personal life. He's he's, what, he's walked out on interviews because people ask him stuff. I'm like, uh, I don't know what, I'm not even going to risk him hanging up on me after it took, <laughs> took so much work for us to finally get together, you know? So, but did you, when you moved Tom Fantana's furniture, at that point, you, yeah. knew, you knew he was Tom Fantana, so did you, it was because you were his friend, right? You didn't just go, hey, I'm going to go to LA and move this guy's stuff because he might get me a job, <laughs> you know? No, what, I, what happened was then he, um, he uh, started, uh, he came in the next day after the thing, and he was like, dude, you were great in that play. I'm having a reading of a play of mine at my house with a bunch of people next week. I'd love for you to come and read with us. So I was like, oh, okay. And then, uh, uh, you know, it became, you know, he was, he is a, a kind of guy who, if you ask anybody who knows him, is very generous with his time and he's very uh, open to, I mean, you know, he always has a new writer moving up in his office, you know, somebody who was his assistant who becomes his, you know, a writer, and he is somebody who cultivates talent, and, you know, and he is, you know, so for me, I was just like, everything, you know, I would climb up the front of his building and bang on his window when I was done with work just to hang out with him, and for him to tell me things like, never believe them when they tell you you're great, because then you have to believe them when they tell you you're shit. Oh, wow, that's, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> inspirational. I just get the shit part, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no. Come on, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't go negative. Yeah, I'm I know. I'm not going to go personal. You can't go negative. Right, okay, fine. You know, you know, you know what it is, is, is the, the internet, you know, I was thinking when you were talking about the diner, it's lucky it was when it, it was that you met him because people didn't really know what producers looked like back in the day. You know, they just, they might know the name, but now you can look on the internet in 10 seconds, see how someone looks. You can go on Twitter and, right. oh, he's at the, he's at the Empire Diner at 722 every Friday. You know, you, 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 right. you wouldn't get near him. <laughs> you know, you'd be like, they'd have you arrested because you'd be you and 45 other people standing there. Yeah. You know, so it's so lucky. I mean... What do you think of Twitter? Are you are you a fan of Twitter? I mean, there's some... um, I am. I don't know. I mean, I uh, I I like the fact that um, you know, I mean, I am somebody who has people, you know, when I'm doing plays and stuff, people who have uh, since the whole Oz thing uh, have come to see. You know, there's a bunch of people who will come and see me, and I love interacting with those people. You know, they're really good people who are. Uh, unbelievably supportive and were very generous. And, uh, and so for me, Twitter is a little like that. I, I can't really, I, I try to be more, uh, twitty, right. but I just, it, it's, it's hard for me to do it, uh, a lot. I, yeah, I just, I, I, I sort of don't, it, it's not something I really think about much. And then, 
But then, like, today, because I totally fucked up last week. Nah, you didn't. I'm letting, I'm letting it go. Yeah. But, but, so I was, like, tweeting out stuff, and then I saw that some other people had been tweeting me a few days ago, so I was, like, responding to those people. And I'm like, you know, that, I like that because it's it's a way to interact with people. Right. But the thing of, the thing of like, just uh, ate it, blah, 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 and now I'm blah, 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 and this is the best, blah, 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 you know. Check out the two sausages and piece of bacon I had this morning, and here's something. I, it was, this was in the bathroom. Yeah, you know, ugh. yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a little. I, I'm, obviously, I'm obviously somebody who's not that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think about it? Well, you know what it is. I think that most people that appreciate you just listen to what you say on Twitter, but then the five people who hate you talk so much shit, you just suddenly think the whole world hates you. Right. You know. Yeah. I think that's the same in true in life as well. You know, you don't you're not going to hear in the newspaper about something amazing you did. You're going to hear, oh, you know, Lee T- Lee Turgenson threw a garbage wrapper out of his window of his car on the way away from the the theater. You know, ugh. You know. That was in the paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Twitter's like is like the paper where you, but you can actually have normal regular people. Well, I wouldn't say regular, but nor normal ish people comment instantaneously, and you do something, it's on the internet ten seconds after you did it. You have, you can't call your friend yeah. at the New York Times and say, hey, can you do me a favor and make sure that doesn't get published? You know, it's already out. Right. There. Twenty right. people Instagrammed you doing whatever, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy. I know, and then the whole thing with this uh, presidential election, it uh, you know, it's just like the campaign. It's just it's ridiculous right now with every the tweeting, and it's just I don't know. I, I don't know where it, it's, it's a little too much. It's, it's really too much instant. This is the first election where people they can tweet on Instagram and Facebook. I mean, don't look at Donald Trump, man. He's got it down to a science. He's tweeting once every six minutes. I know. About how shitty... Get up out of bed to tweet stuff that is or isn't true. I mean, I, I'm like, I, I just don't, I don't get it. And I, it's like, I, it's, it's so easy to not be held responsible, you know. Well, I just read a story about some uh, blogger in Australia that um, said she cured brain cancer by taking healthy food. And now they're talking about sending her to jail. What? Some woman, Australian, I'm going to read it to you. Australian blogger claimed natural remedies cured her brain cancer. Admits none of it is true. It's now being investigated <laughs> by Australia Federal Court. Because I guess she was, people were paying for her app. And then she said she'd donate the money and she never did. And, was, you know, they're just, oh going, my they, God. they're just going after her for no reason, you know, just because, you know, she... But it's amazing, amazing. You can sit in your house now and say something, and the next thing you know, you're in jail. I don't know what that's about. That is that is weird because there's so many things on television where they're selling you something that's going to, and it, 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 everybody knows it's bullshit. Well, you know, you know how you can tell it has that warning after it. This does not cure anything. Right. You know. <laughs> it also makes me laugh when they say, you know, this thing will give you a, a 20 minute erection, but 25 people have died from it. Right. <laughs> Why would anyone go, oh, where's the 800 number? I want to order that right now. <laughs> you know? I don't know, but then, okay, my question is, when was the last time I had an erection? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee your wife was out. <laughs> I mean, if it's, if, it's, if it's a year or two, maybe I'm like, you know what, let's risk it. Yeah, I don't know. The, the, um, the internet, is, that's another thing, the those internet. Those chips, those chips that like, Anal leakage, right? There was like the Olexra thing Ugh. may cause anal leakage. Uh-huh. I'm not going to have that chip. You know, you know what it is? Everybody you talk to, I just had weight surgery, so I'm actually down 120 pounds. Everybody's like, oh, you cheated, you know? And then you, someone else, you know, you, someone's telling me bad, fake sugar's bad, and then regular sugar's bad. Everything's bad for you. Is Everything's bad for you. There's nothing that's not bad to somebody, you know what I mean? Right. It's it's crazy. It's really really nuts. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It all depends on the individual. So check, did, check my DNA. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and that's why there's so many you know antidepressant medications because what, each one of them only works on nine people. You know. So yeah. what are you gonna do? So uh, so how did you fall pretty, in? That's pretty depressing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Wait a minute. So um, did the guys from from uh, Saturday Night Live see you? And 
want you to be in Wayne's World? How did that come about? Um, I, uh, no, I just uh, went in on an open, you know, call to Paramount and went in for the uh, casting director. And because my hair was so long, uh, they uh, they thought I was, you know. And so then, then the next day I knew I was going back in for Lorne Michaels and Mike Myers and Oh no! And then I, you know, first I met Penelope Spears, and then uh, they brought me back in for Lauren and Mike. My lovely wife Denise, uh, Denise has just arrived. In case you're wondering what the hustle and bustle noise is. Hi, so Lee. She, she, oh, there you are. You yeah. know what? I thought you were totally like you were. You were pulling a, 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 a reverse whatever you call that. Where <laughs> now you don't show up. Yeah, right. I'll show this. No, I'll show this prick. <laughs> <laughs> I should have. <laughs> she nearly did. But but anyway, Lee. Don't shout. The poor guy's going to fucking... Okay, I'm sorry. I love you, no. man. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I am sorry. Don't yeah. make the poor guy apologize twice. He already said sorry, and we got past it. I said, I love you, man. Yeah. All right. I, I love you too. Whoa, man. Yeah. Like, no, man. I really love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you didn't also audition for that part. I never would have gotten. <laughs> yeah, she's got the long hair as well, so she was down for it. Hey, did you see Tommy okay. Chung died? Did I see that today? Tommy Chung. Are you serious? Yeah, oh, I, I just. Oh wow. I think I just saw age seventy-seven. Tommy Chung died, and ironically, he was one of the guys that could have been on the show. Uh, oh man. Uh, what can you do? You know what? He would have. He would have forgotten us anyway. You know. <laughs> oh God! Come on! Don't do it. <laughs> we worked through it. We worked through it. <laughs> Wow, I can't believe Tommy Chung died. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, like I said, it could be fake. It was on the internet. So, Let's Google oh it. Yeah, 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 my wife's going to Google it. You never talked oh, about how, how, when you were a kid, when did you decide you wanted to be an actor? Um, well, uh, I don't see anything about it. 11 hours ago, I don't see anything about him being dead. I think it might be a fake. Okay. Um. Yeah, he's no, it. it's a fake. Okay. So that proves yeah. the internet's full uh, of okay. shit. Uh, <laughs> <You know>? so, <laughs> I uh, uh I mean I remember I when I did after Wayne's World came out, I saw a guy that I was in elementary school with and he was like, When I saw the movie dude, I could now all of a sudden I'm sounding like I'm in Wayne Group. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, I love you, uh, man. Before I talk, get off my fucking back, Denise. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, so uh, a guy I was in second grade with said that he remembers a teacher saying, hey, what does everybody want to be when they grow up? And I, everybody was like, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a policeman. And I said, I want to be an actor. And he was like, it was so weird to think about that, like, seven or eight-year-old kid. And then there's, like, this 28-year-old kid in a movie. Uh, so I always wanted to do it. It was something I always wanted to do. That's so awesome that you actually got to do what you wanted to do. Yeah. And another and another early thing, which um, uh, just recently in the last few years, I sort of got another uh, insight into um, was when I was like three, I can remember this moment of, I was like in the late 60s, there's like a black light on my parents, friends are sitting in a circle and I'm dancing to some, whatever, in a got to or something in the middle of the room. And I'm like, I'm three. I just I'm like read about this I'm like today. my daughter's age. Right. <laughs> and everybody is sitting around and they're like watching me intently. Uh, and they're like, wow, just like everybody is just like totally into what I'm doing. And I can remember feeling even at that age, it's one of my earliest memories. I can remember feeling, wow, Unwatchable, right? Okay. Yep. So then, cut to like my my mother dies, and oh, I sorry. had was getting. Can I talk about the fact that I was getting mushrooms that summer? Of course you can. This sure, is, you can this talk. Is, this is this is uncensored. uncensored. This is uncensored talk. The only person we're not yeah. having so on anyway, is Jan so Fogel. I was, I was getting. Well, I was like twenty four at the time, and I was getting a bunch of mushrooms, and I had a friend who had them. Right. So my dad says to me, "Hey, uh, can you get?" Some of those mushrooms? I'm like, yeah. He goes, because I'd, I'd like to do some. And this is like a month after my mom died. And so he and I eat some mushrooms. And when I used to do stuff like that, I used to be terrified that I was going to sever a limb, right? 
do something stupid, and then you have to go to the hospital, and now you're having to tell them that you ate mushrooms. <laughs> right. So, so my dad goes, uh, he eats them, and then all of a sudden they start turning on, and he is like, "Let's go for a ride." And I'm like, "No, Dad, we can't go for a ride." And he's like, "Yeah, let's go. I'll drive." Oh so my then my God. dad starts driving, and we're tripping. And I'm like, how are you doing this? And he goes, well, you know, in like late 70s, I mean, uh, late 60s, early 70s, I did probably 300 hits of acid, like almost once a weekend. And I all of a sudden realized that when everybody was like staring at me intensely and I like, going, wow. Because they were all tripping on acid. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's funny. That is yeah. funny. <laughs> but but the, the, the worst part was, then he goes, hey, remember, remember the time I was clipping Linda Burke's hedges and you were running around the ladder and I cut my finger? And I'm like, yeah. And now this is like, a, he's like, I was tripping. And you know what? It didn't even ruin the trip. But but for me, it was one of those things that I thought I was a total, complete fuck-up because I was playing around the ladder, and my dad had to go to the hospital and get stitches in his finger because I was a stupid fuck. But it turns out he was was tripping. (laughs) I guess that explains why you're so good at the hippie characters. Right? Hey, man. (laughs) Oh, my God. And my, that, now that story can be told because my dad passed away last year. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. They have statute yeah. of limitations. You're fine. It doesn't matter. Yeah, come on. They, what are they going to do? They yeah, exactly. Gonna We're arresting him for looking after his kid when he was free and he was tripping his balls <laughs> out. Yeah. But isn't that 47 years ago? It doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah. Crazy. So I see you, you were in the U.S. remake of Cracker, which was the Robbie Coltrane show from England. Yes. How was that? What do you think of remakes? Like that. Um, I think they usually don't work. Right. And I have an asterisk next to that saying, uh, see uh, Point Break. Yeah. Um, I, you know, sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. I mean, that, I don't know. I that, always think they that, ruin that, a the good Robbie thing. The Robbie Coltrane show was so good. Right. Uh, that I don't know if that uh, ever... Yeah, I don't. I don't know why they do remakes most of the time. Well, I had a conversation with uh, Michael Berryman, the guy, the guy with the bald guy from The Hills Have Eyes, and right. I asked him, "Why did they remake good movies? Why can't they remake the shit ones and get them right this time?" <laughs> you know, and obviously the reason is money because they know they can make money out of making the same movie over again, like you know, Total Recall and, and all those movies that and. I mean, why did they remake Footloose with exactly the same script, the exact same scenes, with just different actors, incidentally actors we've never heard of? Right. You know? I mean, they, they remade the British show Shameless, which is amazing in England, and the first series of the American Shameless was word for word the same script. They just changed the name of the city to an American yeah. city. The Office was okay, but the British no, it one... Wasn't. I mean, I mean, okay. Let's pretend there wasn't no, it a wasn't. British... The, I mean, the British okay Office was a million times like, better. Not if you want to laugh. Right. But they, Come on. Nah, the, the, the office, the British office was so freaking funny, and I never laughed watching any other office, ever. Right. I mean, I'm just talking about in the ranks of remakes, you know? That's what I'm talking about. Like, the remake of the British show, The Inbetweeners, I don't know if you've seen that. That is the funniest... No. Fu- that oh, is my the God, you gotta funniest watch fucking show on the face of the earth. It's just about, <laughs> it's about school kids, and all they talk about is blowing loads in each other's faces, and... H- hookers and whores. They're and remaking it? They, they uh-huh. remade it on MTV and they took all the cursing out of it and it was the oh worst boy. piece of shit ever. <laughs> it was, oh my God. Please go on Netflix and watch The British in Between Us. Don't watch the movies uh, until after you've watched the TV series because they follow the TV series. Oh my God. It's hysterical. Yeah, the, the, the American version is Ugh. crap. And they, you know, it's just, why? What would you like to see them remade? Remake, Lee. Is there a movie that you think would work as a remake? Oh boy, I wish I wish I had, had these kind of questions in advance uh, because <laughs> I would have been able to really we think like about it come up with something answers. clever. Um, I wish I wish they would remake the Jungle Book. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, really? Um, <laughs> didn't they just do that? <laughs> I was just say, didn't they just do that? Yeah. 
Yeah. They did in real life. That would yet. be like saying, let's do The Wizard of Oz over. I See, I like all the old horror movies like Evil Dead. And I like the way they were made. They were made for $20,000 or whatever. And they just yeah. had that feel. Why would you remake Evil Dead or I Spit on Your Grave or any of those movies that just worked the way they were? And it was because they were cheap looking. It was because they were badly acted. It was just, that was the movie. Yeah. I don't know. So yeah, I was actually project? sitting on a plane. Uh, funny you should bring up this topic. Uh, I was sitting on a plane next to uh, Len Wiseman. Right. Right. He directed, like, uh, the Underworld movies. Right, right, right. Right? And he's married to Kate Beckinsale, right? Wow. Mm -hmm. So he and I start having this conversation, and I'm, like, asking him about the remake thing. And I said, like, and I had just seen Total Recall. And he's like, I go, like, Total Recall, why do they remake that? Was it such a great big hit and such a good movie that they needed to remake it? And he goes, I directed that. Oh, shit. <laughs> but in now. And I said, I said, my point is, it wasn't the same story. Why, I just didn't know why. Why is that name so important? What, I just wanted to know what it was. And he said, it's that, yeah, the fact that it's the name. And they will get a certain amount of people. And maybe it's a big hit. But, but it, it just like the, with the point break thing, I didn't understand that at all because it's like, there's like, it's Johnny Utah, it's, it's Bodie, except it's a completely different story. And point break is a surf term. Right. But it was like in all extreme sports. Yeah, I don't know. It was just. No. It was like one of those things, you know. And also it's like, it was of the time. And, you know, and it was, I don't know. Don't yeah. get me started about remakes. <laughs> What about movies that become TV series, like Weird Science, for instance? Now, those always work amazingly. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. Um, well, you see, in that case, I personally didn't think Weird Science was that great of a movie. Oh, no? Um, and I, I don't know how Weird Science was as a TV show, but I know I had a blast doing it. And... Uh, I mean, it was, it was one of the great experiences. I don't know. Did you ever watch it? I watched more of it in the last two weeks than I watched of it. <laughs> Did you see Show Chat? Yes. Where I go and I become the stripper? Yes. <laughs> that was oh, funny. On. Did you did you model yourself on Bill Paxton or did you change it completely? What was your angle for that character? Um, I... I mean, I, uh, he was more uh, very, like, Texas energy, and I was more like a machine gun, I felt like. Right. I was very, much more intense. He was never that intense. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and um, you also had to be cleverer because you couldn't curse, whereas in the movie they could curse. So you had to be right. clever. You know. Did they curse in that movie? A little bit. A little bit. Like, there was like two F words in the whole thing, you know. So that's yeah. not a lot. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> you, when you can't be even remotely cross the line, because, you know, you got this was, you know, 17, was it 18 years ago, Weird Science, the TV series? Back then, you couldn't do anything. Now, you can, you know, you can get away with stuff because the cable channels and all that other stuff, you know. But right. back, back yeah. then, you couldn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, I, I loved your, the, what, what I saw of your character in that. I did think it was different to Bill Paxton. It was definitely different, and it, it was a different way of doing it. And I did I did enjoy what I watched. And I might actually go back and watch some more episodes now. But okay, if you go back, there's another one to watch, which is hilarious, which is the Funhouse and Death. Okay. The clown episode. I play this, like, evil clown. It's hilarious. Wow, I got definitely got to check that out, man. Because I didn't realize you yeah, did, you do. I don't re didn't realize you did eighty eight episodes. Oh yeah, that's crazy. Oh yeah. All right, so I, actually, I don't know about it in every episode, but it was definitely eight. Okay, so I, I'm just Five looking. Episodes. I'm just looking at the list of upcoming remakes. And do you ever see Drop Dead Fred with Rick Mail from England in it? It's Phoebe Cates. Oh, I remember right. That movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. remaking that with Russell Brand. Why? <laughs> Did you see his remake of Arthur? What a piece of shit. Oh, my God. 
terrible. See, that's another one. How, how can you how I, you get a how can you make an awful movie where he doesn't drink? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole point. Yeah. Of course, the worst remake that's upcoming is Gremlins. Oh, that was why? such a great movie. Why? Yeah, why would they do that? Lee's gone Gremlins quiet. One, Lee's gone quiet. Are you not in it, are you? <laughs> no, hey. The, Gremlin, the new Gremlins is going to be... No. <laughs> I don't... I really don't understand it. I don't understand it. And I guess because, like... I guess there's a lot of people who haven't seen... And to be honest, I, I was actually trying to remember if I could even remember Gremlins. I know that... Come on, you got to you know, remember Gizmo. water after midnight. And, yeah, a little Gizmo. Right. <laughs> It'll be great on marketing. You know what I think it is? I think it's the they they're marketing it to people that didn't grow up with these movies, and I just feel bad that the first thing they're going to see is the remake, and then they're going to go back to the old one, and they're going to see it's dated, but they're not going to understand how great the original was anymore because they never saw it first. Right. You know, I don't know. See now, whereas yeah. me, I would want to see the old. I would go back after yeah. seeing something like that that I didn't think was great, and I knew it was a remake. I would want to. If go you back watch a remake, the, the shit. Why would you go watch the other one? Right. Why would I go back or, to the original? If I watch, if I went to the video and watched Point Break now, the one that's out. Okay. And I said, "What a bunch of crap this is." There's no way I would go back and look and look up the old Point Break. It's as simple as that. But now, I know I watched the new old Point Break and it was fucking awesome. Even if people told you that the original was great, wouldn't you want something to compare to? They had the same, they're the same assholes that told me to go watch the new one with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh. Um, oh my god! But speaking of Point Break, have you? Do you know that there's Point Break Live? Do you know what that is? No. They they uh, they were doing it in L.A. and they do it here, and now they travel around with it. But <clears throat> they act out. They like hire like a, a nightclub, and they have these actors who act out the movie Point Break, and they audition from the audience and pick from the audience. A uh, John Utah. Wow. And they have cue cards. One person follows him around with cue cards. It's fucking hilarious. I just saw it like a year ago. And it was just the guy who played the Gary Busey part was, I mean, it's really funny. It's really funny. Are they trying yeah, to be? Googling are they just... trying to be the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Because they do that all the time, don't they? Oh you my go, God, I remember Rocky Horror. You, you go to a theater. Well, this is this is way more. This is the whole. They, they don't show the movie in the background. They just act it out like it's a play. Oh, wow. okay. And, that would be cool. Uh, it's it's so funny. Do, do young it's people so go funny. to that? The the oh, is it the crowd that saw it originally? No, it's pretty much young people. So. Wow, that's pretty cool. Point Break is one of those movies that's like. I mean. Uh, I, it's it. That's a great movie. Right, absolutely. I re I remember those those movies were where violence was okay. It was a little bit more violent, and then they t kind of toned it down. I like Heat. You remember Heat? Yeah, and that movie was yeah. crazy violent with the guns and blood everywhere. You don't see yeah. those style of movies anymore, and I really enjoyed those. You know, it was it, it's like you went to the movie and you're like, okay, I'm not going to see some PG-13 toned down piece of shit that just has an R rating because they say fuck twice. Right. You know, so I don't know. It's crazy. So. Did Tom Fontana write that character in Oz for you? Um, funny story. Um, <laughs> Good. He actually before I was work, we were working on Homicide. I did a, you know a bunch of episodes of that, and uh, he had me. Uh, I was just finishing up Weird Science, and he had me come to New York, and he was like, "So I don't know. I'm going to do this show for HBO. They have a thing about." Uh, prison shows. I mean, prison. Uh, there was. You know, do you remember the the documentary where the guy was like uh, toss a salad to syrup? Oh my god! Yeah, there's the HBO's documentaries are so fucking awesome. There's that one, and then there's yeah. the one in Bellevue where the guy's like, "I hate this place. I've been here for seven years. Nobody <laughs> helps me here." You, uh, it's fucking funny. It's just it was. Oh, like, wait a yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, at first, I thought you were talking about a different one, but right, right, right. right anyway, so because those were such a big hit, they wanted something about prison. So he comes up with this thing, and now we do the show. And when we start, uh, after we are doing it the first year, right? I mean, like the the terror. If you you know, back in '97, there was. 
the network's box, you know, there wasn't everything that's out there now uh, in terms of channels and and people making new content, right? Mm-hmm. Original content. And so we had this show where, like, I get branded with a swath, so there's right. all this, like, full frontal nudity, where, like, people are going to be like, what the fuck are they doing? I, I don't want to see it, right? I, I thought that was awesome because so, you're the only channel doing that. I know. We're, uh, we were the first. Right. Anyway. So, so the show comes out, and now um, we start doing press for it, and I start, you know, talking about it and telling uh, how Tom and I got together, and he had said, you know, maybe I've been thinking about there's a part of a guard that I've been thinking about, or this other character, you know, this guy who comes in and, you know, you know, is from another world and is sort of like what happens to him, and he and I start, and I basically tell this story about how he and I together created the character. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And this is something I'm saying in interviews, you know, everywhere. Right. And like the next year in 99, I, I'm, I got rid of my place in LA and I was going to move back to New York and I'm going through all these old scripts and tossing stuff away. And I come across this script from like 1995. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's Tom's, and he, you know, he would, you know, he sends me everything he writes right. to read, right, when he's developing it. And I'm looking at this thing, and it's called Club Med, and I'm like, Club Med? What the fuck is? I don't know <laughs> Club Med. And I open it up, and it's about a medium security prison, and there's a character. It's not called Beecher, but he's a lawyer. Mm-hmm. It's everything that Beecher was, right? He, and he ends up in, well, I don't remember if it was vehicular manslaughter, but so now I'm like, I was, I've been making out like I helped create this character and I'm so full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I call Tom and I'm like, hey, Tom, I, uh, I was just reading this thing called Club Med. And he goes, uh, <laughs> and I go, you motherfucker, why didn't you say something that I was going on about how I created the part? And he's like, I don't know, man. It seemed important to you. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, he is the best. You're, you're basically the John Lennon of fucking Oz. When, when, when uh, Paul, Paul McCartney wrote yesterday and he wanted to put his fucking name on it when he didn't write any of it. <laughs> you're kidding. No, actually, I, that's not true. No, that's not true. It's absolutely true because no, I'm it, hanging up on you. No, no, <laughs> I just watched. I don't a, want to know the truth. I just want. I watched a documentary about the top ten most rich songs about who, which songs got the most money. You know, in appearances, whatever you want to call it. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then the documentary yesterday was the only Beatles song that was in it, and Paul McCartney wrote it, and they had a, Lennon and him had an agreement where they would put Lennon and McCartney on every song. So sure, Lennon, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and when they just brought out the anthology, he actually took the record company to court and said he wanted it changed to McCartney and Lennon because he wrote it. And <laughs> I don't know if he won. I didn't pay any attention after that, but you know, I just thought it was. You lost interest. Um, hey, I, you uh, their credit. Yeah. I was talking to my. Bro- we were listening to uh, the first Paul McCartney like solo record. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I said to my brother, I said, you know what John Lennon is without Paul McCartney? And he goes, what? I go, unknown. Right. <laughs> because his first solo album, it's like... Sucked. Yeah. I mean, you're just like, what? I think I mean, it's... I mean, I love, don't get me wrong, I love John Lennon. Right. But I, I have this moment where, like... He's talented as uh, McCartney. I thought that... I mean, that, that guy is really tuneful. Paul McCartney is amazing. I yeah. thought that John Lennon's son Julian had a f- better first single out of him when it came out. You know? I, I couldn't remember. Right. I couldn't tell you any of the songs now, but you know. Look at his wife. Sitting in she, the yeah, she, she was not bad for a there's, not a, there's not a funny. There's not a funnier video on YouTube of uh, Yoko Ono on stage singing with John Lennon. And the sound guy isolated her singing, and it sounded like <laughs> fucking Hillary Clinton. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> it was fucking. You should find that on YouTube. It's the funniest shit. She's not in key. She's not anything. She's, ugh. Uh, 
Well, they made uh, a beautiful son. Yeah. I think he's more yeah. famous because he got shot. Oh, Lennon? Mm. I, I, mean, I, I don't know about that. The Beatles that, were no. massive. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't yeah, know, man. No, I, I mean, don't know. He, he, made he, was cool. he was pretty cool. He was pretty cool. He did make it. I would have liked so. to have seen what... I, but I also think I also think that, that because when, when you listen to Double Fantasy, that's an amazing album. Right. And I think he was so sick of that Beatles thing that he just did this raw first album because he was like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm not going to come up with something that's beautiful and that everybody wants to hear. I'm going to just express myself. And if people don't like it, they don't like it. I don't care. George Harrison I mean, did that I was too. I would say it was the same thing with George, George Harrison, Harrison with his wife Linda, and then they did you know like Wings and all. No Wings Paul was Paul McCartney, McCartney. And, yeah, that's what I said. Paul McCartney. You was said Wings. George Harrison. Oh, did I? I'm sorry. I meant to yeah. say. Yeah. I meant to say. Are you say, on the weed? Yeah. Yeah, I wish. She's, she's on acid and she's. I, I wish. She's on acid and she's watching me try and run a radio I, I would, show. <laughs> Denise just cut her, her finger with the. Uh, yeah. I can't. I can't complete oh, my own. Oh, <laughs> are you smoke? Are you are you talking over there? <laughs> like like, hey man, I just love you. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you. I, love you, I wonder if when Lee's getting stoned with his friends, if they call him Lee Tokenson. <laughs> Oh my God! Nobody actually, nobody ever did call me that. No. <laughs> That's a good one, though. So, how did you get ready for the Oz? Did you go and see real prisons and stuff like that? Did you actually stay in a prison somewhat, a little bit, um, talk to people? I, I did. I did go to a prison up in uh, Connecticut. Uh, also, a friend of mine. Um, I mean, he was more a friend of the family, but in Connecticut when we were growing up was ended up in jail because of something almost exactly, it may be worse, but almost exactly like a feature. And he had just gotten out when, uh, right before we started the thing. And, uh, so I talked to him a bunch about what it was like. You know, he was, you know, he was a perfect person to talk to because he, it was the same thing, right? He, it wasn't, prepared for it. It wasn't like he was a criminal. He just was drunk. And, um, so, yeah. So did you have to practice making love to men? Oh, my God. <laughs> don't make him fucking hang how, up. How, how, how was that? I, I don't mean, think was, it, I, was I, it difficult for it? <laughs> I you, said, did you have did you to practice making... Did you, you disrespect... <laughs> <laughs> no, what did you say? I couldn't hear what you said. I, I said... Up, did you have to practice making love to a man? There was no love in that show. Did you watch the fucking show? I know yeah. what it was. Um, I watched that show religiously. <laughs> like on an altar? Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yes. Um, um, I, um, I did not. You know what? Because my character was new to it, I didn't have to like practice it. No. Babe. No, I mean, like, <laughs> okay. no, but I mean, was it like for, for a heterosexual male? You know what I mean? To he didn't, like he have, didn't have to, to. He didn't have to act. It was he was fucking scared, just like he would have been. So that's, that's how he acted. <laughs> you know? How is that? Yeah. To although be funny? Uh, the, the Chris Maloney stuff, um, the uh, when he came out of the show, he and I, I, I was like, hey, we should go out to dinner. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> and we should uh, no. Uh, but I said to him, I said, you know. Because right back then, there was a bunch of, like, there was this thing about Denzel Washington talking to Will Smith, who was doing Six Degrees of Separation, about don't kiss a man on... And so, in the play, there's a kiss between two of the male characters, mm -hmm. Will Smith's character and somebody else. And he was like, don't ever do it because, you know, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff that was sort of around back then, that... Uh, you know, just that fear, that homophobia and right. all that stuff. Yeah. And I said to yeah. him, I said, listen, this show, because it was the second year, and I was like, this show is raw, and I think we have to not try and get away from it, because we knew where it was going to go, sort of. I mean, I don't right. think we knew we were going to be making out as much as we did, right. but I think we have to try and make it sexy. Mm -hmm. And Chris goes, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What do you guys want, a spoon? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, but I think, 
I, I think we did that, man. I, I think uh, I really, when I see, I saw a clip of it uh, recently. I don't know why I was watching myself make out with another man. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, come on. Admit anyway. it was a turn off. Uh, no. <laughs> He's an actor. So uh, but, but it is, I mean, come on. If you watch it religiously, don't you think that it seemed like a real loving thing? Yeah, I, no, it was yes, very. Sure. I thought the way your character progressed into that, you know. I thought the first it was the first all. show I that was... I could actually sit there and go, "Fuck, I'm turning this off now." You know what I mean? There was a British. You probably what? I didn't want to turn. I didn't turn it off because before I was yeah. like, "Oh, oh my, I, I thought want... you just said you wanted no. to turn it off." No, I was no I'm saying, saying, "What the fuck are you talking you watch, about?" You watch some show and two guys start kissing. I'm like, "Fucking change the channel." But now you're watching this, and you know it's like it's part of the. It's real. It's what really happens. It's not there because they just want to fucking pe- have people jerk off to it. It's real. Who yeah. would want to jerk off to it? No anyway? one. <laughs> I'm just saying in general. Although, yeah. although I have to tell you, so many people told me they jerked off to me on that show. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> oh, well, you God. were hot. You were like one of the best looking characters on the show. I will give you that. Yeah, but you're not well, supposed to like him. You're a girl. You're sweet. You're sweet no, and probably a little nearsighted. No, no, <laughs> but... no, no, no. You are a very good-looking guy. I'm sure your wife oh. is very proud of you. Um, oh, that's sweet. Um, <laughs> she is. Uh, she is so sweet. Um, do, do you guys? Have, you guys are married, right? Yes. Unfortunately, oh, there yes. You go. I knew that was coming. <laughs> wow! Wow! Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Too long. Yes, yes we do. We, we have, have a daughter. Three. We have three daughters. Well, that's right. We have three daughters. Yeah. How old? Uh, let's see. 29, 25, and 19. And if, wow. if, and, yeah. if, and if any of them had any friends that wanted to come over and, and as girls and wanted to make out in my, by my pool, I'd have no problem with it. But I don't want to watch two. <laughs> what? I'm just, I said, I said they're friends. You are sick. I didn't say I wanted my You're daughters sick. involved in it. I don't, don't want to hear that. You're you know sick. what I mean? Did you ever hear yeah, of a British show called Queer as Folk? Yes. That show was one of the ones I... I'm trying to remember what year that came yeah. out. But I watched yeah, that. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, it was sort of... That was so... What I thought was great about our show was that we never talked about it. We mm-hmm. didn't... It wasn't like we were putting on some gay thing. No. You know, it wasn't like... You know, we, it was just... We never talked about, oh, like, oh, my God, I'm a little bit. What does this mean that I'm gay? It was just about how we felt about each other. Like yeah. any other... And I have to say... It's, Chris Nolan was just recently on uh, the Actors Studio. Right, I love that show. Um, and he, they, they talk about Oz, obviously. Right. And they talk. He starts talking about uh, the relationship between Keller and Beecher, mm-hmm. and the, the, their feelings for each other. And I'm sitting there watching it on my computer the other day, just like three days ago. And all of a sudden, as he's just talking about our relationship, I started to cry mm-hmm. like you would cry when, if you were like hanging out with somebody you were in a relationship with years ago and you were talking about, you know, how fucked up the relationship was, but how much you still love them and stuff. Right. It was the weirdest fucking thing. I was sitting there, I'm like, I am crying? It was really trippy. And I think it's, it's a testament to how much, you know, the, the, that relationship well, you know how I, I don't know. It just I, that I know, show I know was what you're so, saying. and Tom's yeah. writing. Tom's writing was so amazing. Yeah, very and intense. those characters are so real. And uh, and I I <laughs> I, uh, I called Chris right after I thought I left. He didn't answer. I left a message. I was like, dude, this is so weird, but sort of cool. Chris, <laughs> was it was it over you. was it like the Adele song? Hello, that message. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Queer as Folk was a different kind of thing. It was yeah. it was like the British show This Life. I don't know if you ever saw that. Yeah, like having sex in the bushes. Right. No, I never saw that. You know, it was just it was so like This Life was I mean, the... it was it was fine. Yeah. But I wasn't my thing and it didn't seem that's... I didn't under I couldn't understand it. I'm sure right. that there are people who live lives like that. I just couldn't understand it. I had no yeah. frame of reference for it. Because yeah, this life was was where Andrew Lincoln, who's in Walking Dead, started, and then the Queer as Folk came out, and they're both kind of the same show, except for the scenes in Queer as Folk are gay people having sex, and it's just like crazy explicit for no reason, and you're like, ah, yeah. Well, 
You know what it is? Guys, guys, guys uh, don't clearly, mind. Guys don't mind watching anal rape scenes with guys, but guys don't want to watch guys passionately kissing with guys. There's a big difference. Yeah, interesting. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think. Well, you're so. a girl. I don't know. That never bothered me. That's because you're a girl. I'm not a total homophobe. I just don't want to see that part of it. <laughs> anyway. You know okay. what I mean? Hey, man. Yeah. There's, yeah. No, there's nothing wrong about not wanting to see that. I mean, you know, there was a there was a diner right down the street from where we used to live, right across the water from where you from New York, and there was a gay bar just down the street. And <laughs> at two a, at two a.m., all the dudes in Lever were in the Forum Diner. It was the Forum Diner on Route Four in Paramus, New Jersey, and two o'clock in the morning, you'd be sitting in there having a chicken parmesan by pure coincidence, and. <laughs> There'd be, there'd be two dudes looking like they're out of the Blue Oyster Club in the next booth to you making out. And you're like, uh, uh, no. Is that why you always stood there and stared at them? I went one time. Yeah. That was it. That was enough for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. come on. We, we know that you've got, you know. You know what it is? Since, 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 since being gay. I mean, you seem real focused on it. Yeah, I know. He is. And we say this all the time whenever we're talking I mean, about we, we started all this. To, we veered away from queer as folk. You brought it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he's, he just like loves talking about men on men. I am kind of like wondering about you, Paul. Oh, anyway. So how about the, the rape you did in Monster with the girl? <laughs> or the near rape. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Let's get, get away from that side of it. Let's get back to women. <laughs> What a great movie. So, raping women? It was now nice. We, we went from guys kissing to raping women now? No, because that was the next movie on my list of stuff. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm just making, liking how this is going, I can, you know? I can almost hear him making little check marks next to the topic. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah okay. I, I got a huge X next to the gay conversation. Let's get rid of that. Um, <laughs> but I, when I saw you in Monster, I'm like, wow, th this guy, I'd seen you do everything up to that point. And I'm like, yet another... Thing he can do, another character he can play. You know what I mean? It just came out of a, a lot of the stuff I've watched of you is all. You're not a bad guy. You know what I mean? No, he's very versatile. Yeah, he, but I'm saying is now he now he's now he's a he's a he's he's fighting a with a woman. He's playing that character. And it's fucking awesome. I mean, he's, you've got such a repertoire of technique. I, I gotta just tell <laughs> you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh. I, I like it more when your wife says, uh, I'm good looking. Okay. Oh, um, you are. You're hot. I love yeah. you. I, <laughs> that's better. That's better. I, that's I love better. you, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that was, an, that was, uh, that movie is so great. And when I was, uh, work, when, you know, of course, my, uh, my luck. I have great luck. Right. But, when I get to rate Charlize Theron, she looks like that. Yeah, I was just actually thinking that you know it's good that actors can do that to themselves, but not not the one time you're you're like I'm gonna I'm gonna have sex with this really famous actress and then she walks out yeah. you know, looking like fucking Mama yeah. June. <laughs> oh, you, you you put on some weight. Huh? <laughs> oh, is, and that is, is the makeup is that's how the makeup is. Oh. Um, the craziest thing though was sitting. I couldn't tell whether the, she was going to be great in the movie or terrible because it was so big. When I was like sitting there next to her, it, everything she was doing was so big. I mean, I, then you see it and it's, you know, mind bogglingly brilliant, but, um, yeah. And then, and then also like, it was a kind of thing where like you meet her and you rape her. Uh, hey, how you doing? Nice, nice to meet you. Okay. Yeah, uh, okay, get the pipe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't oh know what is worse, the fact that um, I was doing all those horrible things to her or the fact that the director and I were singing songs from Pippin in between takes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's wow. pretty sick. Now yeah, that's, that's sick. That's crazy. You know what it is? Um, it is I think the a lot of these movies are also made by the editing too, right? Because you're like, you say, I, I, I don't see it. It just seems over the top to me. But when you sit put together, you're like, that was amazing. Yeah, well, because some, it, you know, it's a choice that like, you just, you know, you don't know how it's going to play on camera. And, and if everything else is going, if it's going to seem real or if it's going to, you know, 
but it does, you know, the way, just like that whole way she moved and just like, you know, just, uh, she's so good. Are you, are you one of the people that does method acting where you have to get into the character hours and hours before, or are you just? Uh, no, no, I had a, I, um, I mean, I do, you know, some stuff. I don't, I, to get myself prepared, I, you know, I do a lot of research and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. I had a great class. Uh, this woman, um, her name Kate McGregor Stewart. She's an actress, and she taught a great class. And in her thing, which she, I'm sure, she stole from somebody else, but she used to say, you know, the magic if, you know, when somebody tells you your mother died, you don't. Go okay. Give me give me a couple hours, and I'll have a reaction for you. Uh -huh. You know, you react, and and it doesn't matter what your reaction is. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to bust out crying. It doesn't mean you have to just be there with whatever comes up. Right. And and what's great about that for me is that. Every time I hear something, it can be different. I don't have to be tied to a result. I can just be living in the moment, being prepared with all the stuff that I have to be prepared with for the character and knowing who the character is and where he's coming from and all that stuff. But in the moment, every take can be different. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's pretty cool. I mean, you're not like one of those people that has to think about their, you know, their, their, their dead grandma in a car crash to get the reaction they're looking for on their face. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, sometimes you do stuff like that. Different things, you do different things, but generally, I don't do that. Yeah. I think it's a little weird when people, you know, I, I, really? I, you know, that's how I sort of feel about it. Right. You know, like, like the, I don't know if you've ever heard a story about, like, an actor going, get out of my eye line. You know, right, so, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Else on the, the, on the crew. James well, Gandolfini uh, used used that because we went to watch The Sopranos being filmed one time. And yeah, he had to be completely where he couldn't see anything anywhere to do it. We they kept telling us to move to the left, move to the right. Yeah. See that, and that to me, I always think is just because uh, like maybe he doesn't know his lines or right. that. I mean, I always because what. There are lights, and there's a camera directly in front of you. There's all this stuff that's not the world that you're supposed to be in, and all of a sudden, like, somebody over there has to, like, get out of my... There's a camera! There's seven guys pushing it across the room, but you can't... Yeah. <laughs> just include it. Yeah. That's what I think, is you just include it, because, and you just see what happens. It doesn't... You know, I, uh, a friend of mine worked with David Caruso on uh, one of the shows, and he said he he thought he did it because he didn't know his lines, but he would, like, at times, like, all of a sudden, in the middle of the take, he'd just start screaming at birds. Quiet! Can anybody <laughs> quiet the birds? The birds, bro? Come on. <laughs> so what, do you don't prefer... Blame, don't blame the birds. Do you prefer making movies or, or TV shows? Is there a preference or you don't? Um, Whatever pays good, it, right? <laughs> it depends. It depends. I mean, I've worked on great movies, bad movies. Uh, although, if it's, if it's a... It's not a bad... If it, I mean, it's not a bad movie. It's right. at least a good movie. Um, uh, but, uh, I, I mean, television shows are fun to work on. Uh, but and also I love to do plays too. I mean, it's it's right. all different, and and depending on if, what it is, you know. Do you find that when um, you're doing a play that you improve it each time you do it because you're doing it so many times? Um, yeah, that you can go a little deeper. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I guess with a movie, other than a couple of takes, that's the end of it, right? You haven't got to do it again. Right. 
Yeah. And then, you know, and then the editor is like, like you were saying, it's like, you know, then they get a hold of it and you never know what's going to happen. Right. Um, and I guess with TV shows, you you get stuck doing the same thing for months and months and months. And some movies are done in like two weeks. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Yeah. I I like, uh, you know, I like it all. Let's talk about let's I, talk talk about Generation Kill. There's another oh. great HBO show. Great, great, great show. I loved your character in that. I was watching some bits of that today again, just reminding me. That character you play, Evan Wright. Um Yeah. He, now he was he was originally not going to be part of the show because he, when he first got to HBO, but then when the producer came on, I think they they wanted him to be part. So did you get to hang out with him a lot and see how? We, oh yeah, we hung out for like uh, almost two months. Um, he was yeah he was there you know for like two weeks before we started shooting in South Africa, and then uh, for another like a little over a month, um, and. He, you know he's a great guy, uh, and that book. Did you have you? You didn't read the book, did you? I, I read. The, I'd say the cliff notes of it. I was reading that. Yeah, book. I mean the book. I mean the book is so incredibly funny, and uh, and you know he was a really cool guy to hang with and to talk to, um, and also some of the guys who were actually the recon marines, right? Where like the guy Fruity Rudy was actually Rudy Reyes. Um, and there was a couple of the guys who were in it, uh, that were in the, you know, invasion. Um, that was intense for me because we shot it in South Africa, which was 18 hours away. Wow. And we were there for seven months. Oh my God. Wow. That's a long time to be away. Yeah. Well, and I was, uh, was there a hotel was, involved or were was, you guys camped out? We were in hotels, but I was like a 40-year-old guy with a bunch of 26-year-old guys wow. <laughs> who were on their first fucking HBO show. <laughs> You're like, been there, done that. Yeah, right. Uh, and it was just, I, I mean, it was, it, it was great, and I had a great time, but it was, it was, it was long, man. There was, there was, there, it, it, we were in those Humvees longer than the people who did the invasion. Yeah. Because right. of the hours we were sitting in that thing. I mean, we were just, we were in it every day for seven months. I mean, it was like, uh, but it's funny because it's, and it's one of those shows that people still all the time are stopping me and talking to me about it. And I sort of felt like, did anybody see it? Okay. Uh. <laughs> but, but it is, and the uh, the cool thing was we we the premiere we went down to Camp Pendleton and showed it to the Marines down at Camp Pendleton in San Diego, right. mm -hmm. and when they watched it, they laughed at it like it was a sitcom. Yeah. Everything, everything was a joke. Stuff that I had no idea was as funny as it was. The radio chatter stuff that was meaningless to me, they were busting up laughing about. It was, like a, it was like watching a Seinfeld episode. You know what I think it is? I think like when computer geeks laugh about some program that doesn't work on their computer, and like, <laughs> you know, they're, right. they're in the military. Yeah. They're like, oh, it's hilarious. The guy, some guy's got barbed wire on his balls. You know, you're like, oh, right. my God. And they're like, ah, what a fucking dickhead. You know? <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. That's some funny shit, man. And and he, and he, supposedly some of the guys got in trouble because of what he wrote about them in the book. What do you mean? Well, I, I, it says that um, six of the Marines that were written about in the book claim they were punished for remarks that he published. Although oh, wow. Superiors are saying yeah. it's not true, but six of them are saying it. So like, it sounds like there's a little bit of truth to it there somewhere. Well, yeah, and then there was a whole thing because the guy, the actual guy who was Godfather, mm -hmm. you know, the, the guy who was totally like, he was the, in charge of Camp Pendleton, and it was a huge, like, he didn't want to show it. it. They couldn't get approval by the Marine Corps because of what the book and just how the officers were made up. And But somehow his wife said to him, uh, you know, just let them show it, right? So then he decided to let them show it. But 
they when the guy came out to announce, you know, okay, we're going to uh, show this, and he said like three or four times, uh, this is not endorsed by the Marine Corps. Mm. This is uh, purely for entertainment value. And he said, he kept saying, I was like, why? Are, and I didn't really know all the drama and the politics behind it. But and then afterwards, I was like, I said to one of the guys, I was like, why was it that guy? Why do you keep saying that? And then it turned out that they barely could get it to be shown. I, w- I wonder if they leaned on any of the writers to make some changes in that in any way, shape, or form. Oh, no. No, no, no. no. You mean the Marine Corps? Yeah, I mean, if they read the book. No. No, okay. I just wondered, you know, because you hear, you hear about that stuff going on behind the scenes. Hey, you shouldn't put this scene in it. This isn't true. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't right. Think I, I mean, because, no, because the, we, the technical, that would be if, like, there was a Marine Corps technical advisor, but the technical advisors were all guys who were, had been in the Marine Corps. Some were still in the Marine Corps, but they were all guys who actually were in the book. Right. So, you know. So you've been in so many good shows. I mean, I was looking this afternoon. You, you've been in Rescue Me, Laura. I, I, I don't even want to read your resume to you because you obviously know it. But, <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, I didn't remember that. I see you. You, go, you were back with Chris Maloney when you in SVU for a little while. That was pretty. Uh, cool. Yeah, I, I did an episode with him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that was a very popular clip on, on YouTube when I was researching. Yeah, you know, that's pretty, yeah, it's pretty it was crazy. So funny. It's so funny because it ended up like, um, you know, there's this, you know, a moment where he starts doing, because I'm a, I play this preacher, right? Right. This, uh, and he, like, we get like head to head and like really in tight, right? You saw the clip? Yes. Right. So I'm watching with Eamon Walker, right? Um, who was Saeed and Oz. Right. You know, the Muslim leader. Right? Actually, I have a question yeah. about him in a minute. But go ahead. Okay, but yeah. so we're sitting there watching it, and he turns to me, he goes, oh, dude, and he's British, like right. you, you stupid. Ah. <laughs> anyway, no, he, and he's like, oh, man, that would never happen. He can't touch you. He wouldn't touch you like that, man. That's not. I go, it's because it's an homage to Oz. He goes, oh, just you no know, detective would ever touch him like that, man. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're missing the point. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's funny. It's funny you mentioned Eamon Walker because... Um, he owes you one hundred and fifty dollars. No, it's no. Actually, Andrew Dice Clay owes me three hundred dollars, but that's a whole different. That's a whole different story. What? Yeah, yeah. My wife made T-shirts for him back in the day, and he said, "When I get back to LA, I'll send you a check." And that was in uh, 1995, I think that was. I'll never design yeah. it again for him. Fuck him, <laughs> douchebag. But anyway, I, a- Eamon I'll Walker. When I saw him in Oz, I, I looked at him and I'm like, I fucking know that guy from somewhere. And I went back into my British TV shows that I grew up on. 1985. He oh, I know what you're going to say, motherfucker. A gay home help <laughs> on yeah. his sickness and in health. Uh, and, the, and, the, and the guy that, you know, uh, Warren Warren Mitchell, he's an old guy, total racist guy, but it was, you know, the 80s. Uh-huh. You know, it's just how it was. All the old people were like that because they grew up in the 30s being like that. And he's he, like, was totally, completely fruity as hell. And it was the funniest shit. And I'm like... That's the guy from that. <laughs> right. What was his name? Do you remember his character's name? His character's name was Winston. Oh, right, right, right. right. Winston. Yeah. I wish I could I, yeah. I, I could find a clip. I have the whole series on DVD. It, it, was, oh it was funny because when he and I first were hanging out together, somebody stopped him and said, like, oh, you were Winston, right? Yeah. And he was, like, mortified. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, what, what are they talking about? Oh, I don't want I mean, like, it took like a month of me going, what was the thing? <laughs> and he's like, oh, man, I played this. <laughs> and then he said what you said. Oh, my God. It's fun. It, it was That's so funny. So funny. This has been a, I wish I could think of a couple more actors that have been in stuff that I saw as a kid that now are doing like serious acting. But back then they were just doing, you know, slapstick, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. First job out of school, kind of thing, and they're, they're doing whatever they they can do. You know what I mean? Right. But it was the it was the character. It was set, you know, in the '60s, and old people that were old in the '60s grew up in the '20s, the '30s, whatever. And that's just how it was. There was yeah. there was one black kid in my high school, and I went to high school in 1984. 
you know so uh, it's only just recently that everybody's come together and been accepted and i mean you, you look at new york city there's every race you can think of there you know because everybody came over from wherever where in england it wasn't in the 80s it wasn't like that it was like oh my god we're being invaded at one point you know so we didn't, right. we, we didn't grow up on that we just didn't grow up like that you know it's not our fault yeah. it's not our fault we're bigots we just didn't know people <laughs> you know Right. Are you lying, these? Well, may, well, maybe you were a little bigots, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah them, them English people, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay. My, so, my parents weren't whatever, bigots. Whatever you do, Denise, don't marry one. Yeah, too late. I, I know. <laughs> too, too late. I've been trying to get away for how many years now? Yeah. I can't have them deported. Sounds like at least twenty nine. Yeah, yeah I, I, exactly. I, I can't have them deported. <laughs> She's tried that. <laughs> I actually have to kill her to get deported, so you know, she she better try harder. Hey, don't don't make jokes. Yeah. Yeah, don't make jokes like that. They'll be playing this whole. Because you know I'll be the one before you. No, they'll be playing this whole interview in court. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. oh my God. Did you see what he said? He said he was going to kill me. Yeah. Well, he did sort of sound like he was kidding. Yeah. That always how it starts. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Oh my God. All right, I just recorded how'd you guys, that. How'd you guys meet? On the internet. No, it well, wasn't. it wasn't on the internet. It, it was, was before the internet. Like a there was no internet. No, it wasn't. Ago. It was. It was. Um. What was it? It was like a. I actually, I, I didn't want to bring this up, but I was thinking about this today. I actually wrote a script about this whole story. But what happened was, we were making illegal phone calls to America from England in the early nineties, and I called into this little BBS. Do you remember what a BBS was? It's like a di- uh, dial-in chat thingy with a computer. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. 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 And I met her on that. So I came over here. I came over here to meet her. We hung out and came over a couple more times. And, you know, long story short, got in trouble for fucking around with computers. And and then <laughs> he ended up He was a hacker. He, yeah. he he dropped the soap a couple times yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had I had I had four nights of uh, fun. Luckily I didn't play Tobias's fucking part, but you know. <laughs> yeah. But then I ended up working for the government for the longest time and it actually worked out because I would have had to leave after 90 days because of my visa. See? But All instead right. I was here, you know, 2 years before I went home again. So by then we had a kid and you know everything Everything happens for a reason, just like you you meeting Tom Fontana in a diner. You know what I mean? That's why I brought exactly. it up. Exactly. You know, there's so many pinpoints in my life I can say, well, if I went that way or that didn't happen, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. You know what I mean? So it's all cool. I know. And if I never, ever went on a computer, I wouldn't have never met you. you I blame, curse my sister. You can blame your sister for that. I do. I blame her. Yeah, sister gave it a, <laughs> a, sister gave it a computer. Yeah. So. I said, hey, go online and talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> so what's what's the most proudest good advice? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Not. Well, these I not have listened. Well, we were talking about Twitter before you came in. Oh, did you? Yeah, we're talking about you know. So don't go on Twitter either. <laughs> what Why? Is, Who'd you meet on Twitter? Not me. Twitter. We're talking about <laughs> fans of celebrities. <laughs> oh, okay. What What is your most? I mean, obviously, I don't know if you want to single <laughs> anything out, but what is your most proudest accomplishment? In my entire life. Well, or all right. Uh, career. <laughs> let's let's talk career. We could do both. <laughs> well, I could name his what his for his life. I would say is his daughter. Right? Isn't that your biggest achievement? Your beautiful little Absolutely girl. Absolutely right. See. Okay. All right. What about acting? <laughs> yeah, we really didn't care about that, dude. Yeah. Heart, heartless bastard. See, I'm telling you, uh, he is. He's fucking limey bastard. No, well, I wanted him to exclude the yeah. obvious. You know what I mean? Well, my kids are my life, so. I'm saying if you exclude the obvious, because everybody kids, everyone's kids is their achievement. Everyone's pa- wife, family is, is an achievement. But, you know, he wanted to be an actor. He became an actor. I just, I'm assuming that's a great achievement right there. Okay, or. Yeah. Um, yeah, just, you know, I mean, I, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, I, uh, why? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> It's hard to say. I mean, I mean, or easy to say because I would say Oz. I mean, that that show uh, was such a huge thing in my life, mm-hmm. and I think it was a huge. I, you know, I think we Turning were the point. beginning of a big change in television, mm-hmm. right. and I feel like you know the fact that we played those characters who were just two guys in love. Mm-hmm. And struggling to figure it out, you know. I, I you know, uh, 
I always used to say, you know what, if you can find anybody to love you, you're lucky. Yeah. Especially, I tell you that Paul all the time. The you should be anyway. fucking yeah, you very lucky that I'm still here. You I tell him that all the fucking time. Oh, don't make that guy fucking hang up. <laughs> <laughs> he could have been. He could have been. Could have been tossing salad. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> what? Exactly. Like, okay. You know, oh, like you know, like a real salad. He didn't mean like the ass salad. He meant a real salad. Have have a, have, a, have a lot of people that have been in prison came up to you and told you that it was very realistic. Oz. Um. Uh, actually, uh, yes, yes, people would tell me that, but then they would also tell me that they didn't, that sex was not forced. There was no, that, that part wasn't real. Oh, okay. That's interesting. But you, you hear so like, much of it that, you know, like when you go to jail and stuff like that, like... Yeah, but you don't hear it from people that have been in jail. You hear it people from People make you your bit. They're, you know, they always say you, you that. You hear that know? shit from movies and TV. You don't hear it from anyone that's been in jail. I don't know. Now I'm curious. Now I'm going to have to start asking people who were in jail. So, like, or, did anybody or make you their bitch? <laughs> give uh, Paul some sodium pentothal. <laughs> truth serum. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Paul. Because, you know, I don't know. You are very, like, curious. We all say that you're very curious about it. Well, you can say what you want. I'm not playing for that team. <laughs> hey, maybe I should ask Lee Still the not. question that everybody asks. Is it gay or not? Oh, my God. Okay, so, Lee, <laughs> you're going to laugh at this it? one. Is it gay? Don't hang up before you give us a bump okay. on the show. Okay, is it gay or not for a man to taste his own cum? Oh, my God. Definitely not gay. Thank you. Thank you. You don't think that's gay if it's a guy gay. eats his own cum? It's gay if it's another guy's cum, but licking cum off a girl's ass that you just fucked is not gay. End of story. Yeah. Oh. You just heard it from a fucking major celebrity, so shut the fuck Dude, up now. That's a way to find out if you're healthy or not. Yeah, exactly. If, if you're what or not? I miss that. If you're healthy or not. If yeah. you're healthy or not? Yeah. Yeah. What's cheaper, a protein bar for 250 I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> why, why you, why would you ask me? Why would you ask me? Uh, okay, like I, I asked you that question. Okay, Do you, because so you think it's gay? For come on. Okay, no, no, no. The reason why I asked you that question. Oh my god. Okay, is because like Please. normally we have two other guys here in studio with us, and they love to each other's car. Okay, okay, no, 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 no. And what? Paul yeah, all no. the time. Like, whenever we talk about things like that and gay and stuff like that, like, Paul really always seems, like, so intrigued all the time about stuff, right? So one day, I asked him, I'm like, look, like, they all said, like, we think that Paul's, like, kind of, like, bi-curious, you know? Like, he's gay-curious and stuff, <laughs> right? So I said to him, I really believe it. And the reason why I said that to him is because when me and Paul first started having sex, like... One time, he freaking shot his load, oh my God. and then he licked it off my butt. And I'm like, oh, that's that." I thought that was weird because I, like, nothing like that ever happened to me before. Do you realize who you're talking to? <laughs> Come on. Do you realize this isn't the guy at the 7-Eleven you're having a conversation? This is fucking... So, this is, so this is, here we're all talking about, you know, prison and gay and all of this bit. I, I thought mean, that I would ask him since he actually played a role. He wasn't so he in prison. Know. It was an I, acting I job. Said, I did I say role. Denise, if that is your name. Yeah. Yes, that is my I'll name. You when you tell me what you tell me about Paul, what okay. I say back is... Is that acting? This is a guy, this is a guy <laughs> who's trying to understand the world. Maybe he doesn't understand what's going on, and he's a searcher. Okay. He's a searcher. He's trying to understand people. Okay. Right. Different people who aren't like him. Exactly. Yeah, there's He's nobody not trying to quite judge like it him. The way you do. Okay. Yeah, see, so and, and And I'll tell you something. Yes. You have definitely tasted your vaginal juice. Well, yeah, off my lips. I <laughs> guess. Off my tongue. <laughs> yeah, or I or guess. the other body part. What? You've never gone, uh, you know, come on. I, 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 I mean, I, I guess, I mean, okay, I guess, I guess, I'm just, <laughs> I guess, I mean, oh I'm sure, God. like, you know, with kissing and all of that, is that but oh, yeah, is, you, that you, is that lesbian? Is that lesbian or not, Paul? When, when she tastes 
shits her uh, itself off. Well, of it's you. not like I, I can stick what... my head down there. And yeah, lick but it. if you stick your fingers and you lick your fingers, that's that's the same exact thing. Is it? Yeah, of course it is. It's pretty lesbian. Yeah. You're a lesbian. You're a fucking okay, lesbian. Okay, then I'm a, then I'm a lesbian, lesbian. if I yeah. tasted whatever. A, I was on a show. I know. <laughs> You're and, a lesbian. And, and I, let me tell okay. you. I'm, I'm sorry that you had to find this out. I'm so time. sorry, but you know, Lee, I am so thankful for you enlightening me. I have me, no problem. Now, what? I, I'll never say I have, that again to you. I Paul. have no I'm problem so with her being a lesbian as long <laughs> yeah. as she does it in front of me. And that's all that I ask. This like. is a great guy. This yeah. is a great guy. Hey, thank He's you, so sir. Lucky. <laughs> thank you, sir. You're not better than him. One of my favorite actors is telling me, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Hey. You know? Now I'm never gonna live it down. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm gonna play. I'm, we're gonna play this clip every week on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's nothing wrong with any of it. No, I really don't Come care on. what people do. I just don't want to see some of it. That's that's all I've ever said. You know. To each his own. On this old radio show that I used. Denise, to be... did yes. you ever masturbate? Please, of course you did. When I was a kid. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> what were you? Then you're a lesbian. Then you're a lesbian. Yeah, lesbian. Yeah, exactly. With a woman's body parts. Okay. Did, did Jared Fogel come over and hang out with you? What the fuck. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, that was whoa. low. Too soon. Too soon. Yeah, yeah exactly. Soon. So, I don't know. so Lee, tell me about this new show, Outcast, that's coming out in next month. Um, Outcast, bro. Um, also, I, w- I worked on Power a little bit coming out this year too oh, uh, so I, I want to hear everything is, uh, based on a graphic novel mm-hmm. do you know about it I don't I don't know about it. that but no. I do know about just Outcast. yeah Outcast. I've heard about. you know that you're working on the pilot and all for it well I think it's past the yeah. pilot it's coming out on Cinemax next month so I think it's past the pilot okay but. well I'm just saying I just the last I heard of what he was doing he was working on it yeah um and uh, you know, if, if you really are a Lee Turgeson lover, you'll you'll watch Silver Tongues. That's my wife's favorite movie, and it's on uh, iTunes. I just watched uh, your interview with, with the, the the director from Scotland who made it with you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a character. He's a character. That guy is a great guy. Yeah, funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's a character. He's definitely a character. You know what it is? I grew up with, even though I grew up in England, Scotland, people from Scotland and Ireland, even though everybody thinks we all hate each other, we when we get to the bar, we're all fucking best friends. So, you know. Yeah. What was the name oh, of that boy. movie so you again? Didn't, you didn't like him? No, Over I thought it was funny as hell. I pro- It was probably the same situation where you said, you know, you didn't see the funny stuff in Generation Kill, you know, but me, I picked up on some of the stuff he was saying that you didn't catch. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, so that interview is yeah. fucking hilarious. <laughs> I don't think the interview guy even had a clue what he was saying. <laughs> you know? Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I, uh, what, I was, there was something else I was going to say. Something else I was going to say. You were going to tell us oh, about... Oh, also, also oh. Did, did, you didn't see Tookin, did you? Yes, I watched half of that. Uh I, for some oh, reason, I dude. Did, yeah. You didn't get to the end. No. The big finale is incredible. Really? You blew, you blew it. I, you I, blew it. I, de- I definitely will have to check that out because I did watch half of it, but it got so late one night when I was watching it. I just turned Did it you get yeah, Margaret Cho? Yes. In it? Yes. Hilarious. Yeah. But yeah. the ending is hilarious. That's a spoof of Taken, by the way, Denise, in case you're wondering what we're talking about. Yeah, who cares? They don't yeah. care. You know? Yeah. They'll figure it out. Um, anyway, uh, so Abcast, yeah, it's about, a, you know, a guy who has, the, you know, it's about exorcism and, uh, the, uh, actor who, oh, fuck, what is his name? Have you been oh, smoking was, uh, tonight? <laughs> huh? I was just teasing you. Asking you. That already. I was just teasing you, asking you if you, because you're like, uh, I was like, were you smoking tonight? <laughs> No. Okay. No. Darn. <laughs> He's gonna have. To I don't do any of that stuff anymore, Denise. Okay. Uh, right. I, I I had to straighten it all up. All right. Yeah, I, I, hear guy, okay? I hear you. I hear you. He's not gonna sit around and watch his kid while he's doing acid. No, certainly not. <laughs> Unless you can get me some acid. <laughs> <laughs> now those days are those days are long gone for me too. Yeah. Long gone. Only because we, we, we don't know anywhere to long buy gone. acid at this point. No, I, yeah. you know the most that I ever did was like oh my God, pot, yeah. hash, 
Maybe one time I went to a concert and yeah. I took a Quaalude. That was it. I never really was like into drugs. You know what it is? I think in the 60s, drugs were cool. Now they can kill you. Well, I grew yeah. up in the 70s. You know what I mean? Prince? Prince. I thought Prince was going to live to be 100. He took the wrong yeah. pill. <laughs> yeah. Too much Percocet. Yeah. The hell. Well, I, they I, say he got addicted. He, they said that he had a hip replacement. It's all hearsay. You don't know well, any of that so stuff. They said, they said I mean, he look, had hip look surgery up, and everything. Look at yeah. poor Robin Williams, man. He was on top of the world and he still was depressed and ended it. You know what I mean? So it's not. Yeah. It's not, you know, being the top of your game still doesn't stop you being depressed and doesn't stop you anything. Yeah. Everybody thinks that, you know, when you're on top of the world, you're fucking amazing, you know? Well, personally, I think like actors or people who are in the public eye. They can't really be themselves. They have to live kind of like a sheltered life when they're on their own time. I mean, paparazzi everywhere. I mean, how could they really just be themselves? You do realize that the people like the Kardashians that are in the public eye all the time. Yeah, but they, they want to be. Their, their publicist calls the newspaper and says, hey, we're going to be at this restaurant at 2, yeah. two o'clock. They and want... then they get a kickback. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The Kardashians make money when their pictures show up in places from yeah. the photographers. I'd, I'd rather be walking down the street and see. I mean, personally, that's probably the only way because personally, their shows, I think, stink. I've, I've watched them and they're come like, come on. I, I, It's weird. Yeah, it is. It's, I want to know it's what. It's weird. Like, really? Like, do I really want to know this or? Why are they famous? I mean, let's be, let's be honest. Kim Kardashian's famous because she did a sex tape and it was her mother that sold the tape to Vivid or whoever it was. Her yeah. mother sent this. She sold the sex I, tape of her I, daughter. I think they're, you know why I think they're famous? Why? Because of OJ. Mm. Think about it. Think about it. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, Puts that's when the they all came. That's what, I was just yeah. going to say, that's when they all came into the public eye, into, you know, yep. into the light of it. The funniest thing about OJ was when SNL did the thing with him standing outside the house with the police, and he's like, look, I can't get over the wall, I can't get over the wall, and then somebody <laughs> drives, someone drives past in the car and throws the ball and goes, juice, and he dives right over the wall and catches the ball. <laughs> Funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. <laughs> SNL. I was I was actually working on a show while the trial was going on, and I was working with a guy who was a football player who knew was good friends with OJ, and he said to me, he goes, you know, the weird thing is that they're saying that uh, the police were trying to frame him. He said, I used to he I used to get him drugs. And I would bring them to his house. And when I would get there, there'd be a party going on and there'd be all cops. And I'd be like, dude, dude can I really come in here right now? And he's like, oh, yeah, these are all my friends. Jesus. And so he, he felt like they tanked it for him. They did all those things so that he would, their buddy would get out. What do you think about that cop that held that knife for 15 years or whatever it was? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but they said that that wasn't the the weapon. Yeah, but they, it also could have been cleaned off 15 years worth of cleaning. You know what I mean? There's always that chance. Shove it in a bowl of bleach. Ask the guy from Making a Murderer. Yeah. Oh, and talking of Making a Murderer, your your brother's a great... He does the music for all these TV oh, shows. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, yeah. He did the music for Making a Murderer. That's It's awesome. you yeah. got a very talented family. Do you, have, you, you just have one brother or are there other brothers? I just want... Just one. And he also, back in the day, was a recording engineer and recorded all the Bobby McFerrin stuff. Don't worry, be happy. All that, you know, the wow. oh, wow. Young and My really? album. Very, very cool stuff. That's awesome, man. You've got uh, a talented family. Then, huh? you got a talented family. Well, it's a burden. Uh. <laughs> Does he get jealous if you two are walking down the street and people know who you are? And don't know who he is because he's like in, not in a position. Um, no. <laughs> 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 no, you know what he does? Because he's five and a half years older. He always goes, "Which one do you think is older?" And they always say me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, then you know how he laughs. Then oh, how, how he laughs. Yeah. But that's. But they think I'm older because I'm tall. Okay. Yeah. That's that's why, son. It's not because he looks younger. Yeah. Not because he looks. I mean, I guess he does. But, you know, he does in a certain light. He looks younger, but you know. That's funny. That's hilarious. Guys. 
That's funny. I've got to go, guys. All right, okay, no we problem. Know. It was so great talking to you. Can you do one you. little thing I, for us? Can you just do one little thing for us before you leave? Dude, I just did a hundred little things for you. I know. <laughs> I just want I just want you to say this is Lee Turgan. I just want you to say that this is Lee Turgan, and you know, listening to the dysfunctional podcast. Can you just do that real quick? Yeah. This is Lee Turgan. You're listening to Bunch of Bunch of Bunch. You said real quick. All right, no. You want not, quicker? Not quite as quick as that. Slow. Okay, ready? This is Lee Turgerson, and you're listening to Dysfunctional Podcast. Thank you so was much. Good? Yeah, that good? Thank you. Sorry. That was perfect. Thank Wait, you so I've got, much. Another, I've got a question. Mm-hmm. Here's another thing that threw me. A live podcast? I've never heard of such a thing. Well, you know what it is? is, is it's actually a video cast, but the audio gets put on iTunes as a podcast and we get m- many more listeners to the podcast. People don't watch stuff now when it's on. It wasn't like when Oz was on, my buddy used to come over and we'd all sit on the end of the bed and watch Oz because that's when yeah. it was on. Now they watch it when they want to watch it. Right. On their phones, on their iPads. So we get many, yeah. many, many more listens and watches on YouTube and iTunes. All right. Yeah. And we have a yeah, lot just, of your I, that's fans. That's why I was when I, when I when I realized like when I saw your thing, and I, I, did I say I was sorry <laughs> uh, last week when I realized you were like okay, and then the worst thing was today I was like you know what I'm gonna because I was just gonna go on you know I was like why why you know man I was like maybe I should listen to one and, and see you know what their vibe is you know get a sense of it. And so I, I'm like, okay, last uh, episode. And all of a sudden I realized it's the one where I didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't, like, we weren't oh. nasty, right? We weren't nasty. No, no. we weren't. We, had, we no. just, you know. I, you, uh, you handled it with great aplomb. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It's so you know, we didn't. I, I I hope it was worth it, and I hope I didn't suck. No. Oh my God! You Absolutely were not. Great. On, a scale, on a scale of one to ten. Ten, twelve. 12. 12. Yeah, you were great. We we yeah, so awesome. enjoyed it. We so enjoyed and, and it. And sorry for that embarrassing question. <laughs> yeah, really. Do you want which to, one? Wait, which one? We 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 could edit uh, that out no. <laughs> if you want. Oh come on. No. All right, Lee. Thank you. You're the, you're the only one who thought it was weird. Yeah. I I don't know. I guess you know I'm a woman. What can I tell you? You know what it is. I, I don't for, think like a guy. For the last two weeks, I've been going on about we got Lee for the show. We got Lee for the show, and she's trying to think what the fuck can I say to him so he hangs up on Paul. No, I <laughs> didn't. That's not true. <laughs> we no, that's not true. true. But I'm telling yeah. you, I'm just no. looking at his pictures, and you are hot. Oh my god. Oh yeah. <laughs> can I can you I put sure, a picture man. of him you over sure. my bed? Um, All right, let the, let the poor guy go. <laughs> no, but you know what? No, wait. One last thing. You know, one last thing, Denise. Yes. I want to leave you with this. Okay. My dad used to say his philosophy in life was just to watch and not judge. Mm-hmm. You know? That's it right there. Yeah. You could try. Let's see. Let's just try some of that. Okay, I will. How, how long have you guys been together? 22 I think, years. I think he's 22. Even if he, is, he likes to talk about it, mm-hmm. he's into women. Yes, exactly. Jesus. Yep. <laughs> a man comes across the ocean, mm-hmm. dedicates his life to a woman, and a woman goes, oh, I don't know if he likes me or shoes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know what it means. <laughs> All right. I'll go easier on him. Yeah, that, that'll be yeah, a first. As, yeah. soon as, you, as soon as you hang up, I'm getting laid it's into it. This is this <laughs> nice. <laughs> Learning lesson. Yeah. He's going to be calling you Lee, though. Yeah. Can I? Don't judge. Oh, yeah. Don't judge. Paul. All right. No. I, no. I just realized that my daughter is in her bedroom and probably heard the last half hour of stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> That's not good. That's Hopefully not she's good. sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Well, happy Mother's Day to your wife. Yeah, and just... Oh, uh, thank you. Happy Mother's Day to you. And thank if your daughter you. asks what it was, just say you were on acid for old time's sake. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I don't know what it was. I was listening to a radio show. Yeah, exactly. It was well, exactly. it was somebody. It, it was, was someone. A radio show. It was someone doing an impression of me. I wasn't even on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Guys, Lee. We'll let you go. Thanks, thank Lee. You. Appreciate it. Thank Bye-bye. you so much, buddy. Yeah, take care. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Bye bye. That was great. What a great guy. Oh my god. <laughs> he actually called at two minutes to eight. 
while, oh, really? the, while the intro was playing. And uh. I'm like, oh my God, please. I was thinking about cutting the intro off because he called. And I'm like, oh no, he's going to hang up. He's going to listen to the, listen to that shitty intro. <laughs> oh, did you tell him that you were doing the intro or? No, oh, how could I tell him? And here I am and I'm like, oh my God. There was like, I don't know, somewhere on the parkway, there was some kind of procession. I don't know if it was like a funeral but there were like these you, there was something people that you would no something that you would see like if, if there was a there was people with a, a state official or something because they had police cars with all like lights going and it was this big long procession and it wasn't they weren't looking for that convict that escaped I one town away from us i don't know i don't know what it was but you know traffic was running slow a bit and i'm like sitting there watching the time watching the time and i'm like oh my god oh my god oh my god like i'm gonna be late and that's why I, like every five minutes i was texting you i'm at exit you know 82 i'm at exit 77 i'm on i'm on you it, know it didn't matter because i saw the call and i'm like oh my god that's lee he's calling right when i'm playing the intro so like i had to go right i'm like hi how it's phone call and then it was lee i'm like oh which was good actually because I was on my own for like the first 15, 20 minutes because you were fucking stuck in traffic. And I was trying to figure out what the fuck I was going to talk about mm -hmm. before he was on. You know, I made myself a little checklist. But luckily, I didn't have to talk about any of that crap. I was and it, it was actually, it was just so funny because while I was in the car, when I was talking to, to Lauren and Kyle. You, you should know, have listened was, to the show on the well, phone. Well, no, I was telling, I was going to, but I couldn't put it up. You know, you don't get internet. And I didn't know, actually, do I go to dysfunctionalpodcast.com and pull it up? Or I have on my iPhone, I have podcasts. No, but the you, only you could have watched, watched it on the YouTube right, that app. was The only thing that pulled up was just all our old podcasts. Mm -hmm. So The anyway, live I, one is on anyway, YouTube. I was, telling, I was telling Kyle that Lee was going to be on tonight. And right away, Kyle starts like laughing and then he was telling me all about his character as, Ter as Terry on, you know, um, oh, there goes my Wayne's mind World. Again. Yes, thank you, on Wayne's World. Wayne's World, what, Wayne's World, what, excellent. That's why I was saying, you know, I love you, man. So because yeah. Kyle was like the whole time in the car, he was saying, I love you, man. He's like, no. When you first like, said that. I, I really love you, man. When you man. first said that, I'm like, <laughs> he is going to fucking hang up with this stupidity. And it was just so, well, Kyle's like, you have to say that to him, please. Uh, you know, so I'm like, okay, Kyle, I will. But even that, I mean, you know, I just visualized him in the back of the, you know, in the back of the car with him and, you know. Fucking Big A didn't even message me back, you douchebag. It was so funny, but Fucking he was really, really, what a great guest. He was awesome. Awesome guest. And you know what? Like in him talking, I could really understand like what he's saying and stuff like that. And he's right, you know, don't judge, let just like observe and all that bit, you know. But like with the, the the TV show, like his character, you know, like I can see where he was saying that there was too genuine, you know, like a love affair that developed between two guys who were stuck in jail. You know, they knew they were going to be there for a long time and they found comfort in each other. And that is natural. What developed between the two of them was a natural, you know, progression in their relationship between the two of them. And it wasn't like gay and, you know, it was just two people who happened to be the same sex. But, you know, I mean, they're just as capable of having the same type of emotions as a man and a woman. You know? You're acting like they're fucking monkeys. No. Of course they have the same emotions. I'm not, Paul, you know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like feelings, like deep feelings that a man and a woman share. You know? Mm -hmm. Like people are so critical of it, you know, and homophobic and they don't, you know. Like that TV show that we were watching, you know, with all the different racial couples and the one was a gay male couple who were getting married. I can't remember what the show was called. We just got done watching it. I know. You're talking about the one that had the Jewish guy. Right, it had and the, the Jewish guy and the 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 non-Jewish woman who were getting married. Then you had the, the black woman who was marrying a white guy. Right. Right? And then you had the gay couple. I wish I could remember what it fucking was and called. And it was like the same thing, like old school. You know what I mean? Like the father was dead oh, set. Bright and prejudice. Right. The, the, you know, the father was dead set against it. 
you know, because he he didn't grow up that way. He didn't believe that, you know, a man could be in love with, a, a, you know, another man, blah, blah, blah. It's not supposed to work that way. But in the end, you know, like, did you see how all of a sudden when he saw the love between the two of them and the support that he got and all the people that were Are there? Are you 100% sure that was why? Or do you think that it's more like, oh, I'm going to look like a total cunt on TV? No, because throughout the whole thing, he was dead set against it and he didn't, uh, you know, he had no problems showing it them. But in the end, he even surprised his family to go up and give a speech. Right. You know? I yeah, think his speech was like, thanks for coming. Yeah, but you know what? He didn't even have to do that. And just the fact that he got up his there wife and he showed... His said, don't he, be well, a total he, twat. Yeah, but he went up there and he showed his support. You know? And I thought, like, that was the most, like, touching part of that show. Right. And all, but... I mean, I understand. The Jewish one was the most annoying one. Well, that's because the mother was a real yenta. Yeah, I, I, I fucking... Lee just retweeted my tweets thanking him. That's fucking cool. He's such an... He's an awesome guy. Awesome Every, guy. Everyone we interview turns out to be so down to earth. They are. They and just he's so funny and the stories and... You know, it's like... To me, to tell you the truth, I like to get to know the person behind the actor. or the, you, you know what I mean? I want to know who he is and all. And being able to, like, laugh and, you know, I mean, that's kind of my way of getting them to kind of, like, reveal a little bit of their own personality. You didn't need to ask him that question, though, man. He could have fucking hung up for that shit. Oh, my God. I thought it was funny. Yeah, I'm sure you did. I'm sure it was fucking. Well, nice. you guys are talking about everything else. You're talking about, you know. Yeah, but we didn't go that. Drugs far. and this and that. What's the difference between acid and cum? Mm. If you could, you could say you could drop acid, but you can't say you can't taste cum. I mean, what's the big That's deal? That's a big difference. This is yeah, but this is. Well, then you know what? I'll just blame it on the wine. I had, I had two glasses before I came mm, here. That explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Blame it on the one. <sighs> That's it. But Just you still love me, Use don't your you? phone right in front of the camera. Oh, here. See, look, I got yeah, it. Perfect. iPhone. Okay. I don't know. What's that the was matter? A, I'm trying to... I actually think I so asked... So then just cut it. No, I'm not cut that anything. clip out. I'm not cutting anything. Unless I'm told to by the interviewee, which I have only... Well, had. I've only ever been told that once, and it was something so insignificant that wasn't even... The, that question you asked would have been left in, but some other stupid question came out because of some legal... He shouldn't have commented about... Uh, whatever. No. But like, you could ask him about coming off on someone's asshole and licking it out. That was fine, but then... But what did I say that was wrong? Because I didn't go and... I didn't even sit there and say, you said that. I didn't say anything about... you. See, you just elaborated it more. I just said... Is it okay to taste or whatever? Is that gay? And then you went on to elaborate about licking an asshole and eating cum. I mean, I didn't say that. You did. <laughs> so you elaborated what? it more than me. No. No? It was a dead dead we're silence. Gonna, we're going to have to, like, re replay that clip. Oh my God. I'm just looking at all my questions I wrote down, and I pretty much covered everything. Good for you. Good boy, Mr. Studious. How does that mean? Well, because you study. See, I, I go on the I've web. I've been watching clips all I'm, afternoon. I'm an easy kind of girl, you know? Hey, I just like... I got... I don't know if you were here when we were talking about weird science, were you? Yeah. He gave me two episodes I got to check out. Cause I, yeah, I, I want to actually... He had given a name of a movie. I got to listen to it. That He said that his wife's favorite movie. And to watch that. I'm always looking for good movies to watch. So if another woman likes it, then... I'm in. I'll watch it. Yeah. Good job, because he just tweeted, dysfunctional podcast, I love you guys. No, I, dot, 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 dot. Love you, man. You did this. Oh! <laughs> yeah. so. No, I love you, man. Yeah. He's awesome. He is awesome. What a fun guy. I love you guys. No, I love now you guys. Now I have to. He actually wrote it twice. To. He wrote, I love you guys. No, I love you guys. That was a blast. Thank you for being so forgiving. Yeah, because the first 10 minutes of the call was him apologizing. I'm like, so what no, are you no, apologizing no, no, for? No, no, no. You should write back 
Why are we having a conversation on our radio show? About what we're <laughs> no, I was going to just say, you should tweet him back. Denise says, forgive her. Yeah. <laughs> Denise says, please forgive her. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, my God. It's, funny. it's Denise that needs to be forgiven. He's crazy. Yeah, someone, someone just said it was a great interview, one of his fans, so that's fucking cool. We're going to post this uh, on iTunes. It'll probably be up like 1 a.m. or something. But, uh, yeah, it's fucking Lee is cool as hell, man. Cool as hell. Very cool. So what else is going on? Did we talk about the Eddie the Eagle movie last week? Did we talk about that? I don't think so. I don't remember. Okay, are we just going to st- not talk? While we all fucking tweet back and forward? I'm just flabbergasted still. I'm like, that was such a great interview. Yeah. You know what I mean? How can you top that? I mean, what could you really a- talk about after having such a dynamic interview. Yeah, he's crazy. Such a great yeah. guy. Like Yeah. He great. didn't even he didn't even sidestep your question, which is I was going, Oh my god, he's gonna fucking hang up. Yeah, but I liked a little smile on your face though. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I was no, I'm like fuck. I was watching your smile. Yeah, okay. I was like, oh embarrassment. Big like smile, ah. big smile on my face. Oh my big god. Big smile on your face. Yep. <laughs> Awesome. Very awesome. Now, who are we going to get to top that? I don't think we, we're going to be able to top. I don't know. I don't know either. Maybe I can still get Tommy Chung saying he's not dead. What a fucking <laughs> idiot. You know who posted that? I got I got I got to call out the idiot that posted that on my Facebook page. Hold on. I'm gonna, I, I know who it is, but I'm just going to fucking pull it up just to see if they've still got it up. Uh, let's see. Well, that was just like last week I saw somebody else had said that. Oh, who was it? Like somebody else had died, right? And there, that was like just right after um, when Prince died. Oh, they took it down. The person who did it took it down. Okay, well, asshole. When, when Prince died, okay. Is he really dead? That no, no, no. Then somebody else was somebody else was posting, okay, that somebody else had died. And then when I googled it, like the person died last year. Oh, I, yeah, I remember. <laughs> remember, I, remember. I don't know who it was yeah. though. Uh, okay. Some singer or, or some like. Oh, was it fucking uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy that Eddie Murphy does the impression of, fucking hot tub. I'm in hot tub. That fucking guy. What's his name? Why can't I remember his fucking name? I don't know. It's like I'm drawing a blank. The black know. fucking guy. Yeah, the guy was black. Wait, 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 what are you ta- What are you talking about, right there? What are you talking about, the man? Hey, hey, hot tub. <laughs> remember that's Eddie Murphy's impression of him? <laughs> yeah, I, know, I can't fucking. I don't know. I don't know. Like my mind is just blank. Oh my god. Why can't I remember his fucking name? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, my God. James Brown. That's... No, it wasn't him. They weren't saying that James or Brown. Or Little Richard it was, or it someone. Was somebody, it was somebody else. All right, whatever. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm sure it wasn't. Whatever. So, t- what did you... Did we talk about the Eddie the Eagle movie? Yes, last week or not? No. Why? What do you want to talk about it? Well, what do you think of it? What do I think of it? The movie, yeah. Because you didn't know who Eddie Edwards was before you watched that movie. But... Um, Remember, he, he, for anyone listening who doesn't have a fucking clue what we're talking about, Eddie the Eagle was, was his nickname. His real name was Eddie Edwards, and he was the UK's first ski jumper. And they didn't have any ski jumpers before, and they didn't even have a t- you know a, a entry in it. And it now, kinda, now, here's a question. Was he, <coughs> like, did he have, like, um a handicap, or was he kind of, like, slow? I, they didn't really even... They didn't really address it. They didn't address it? No. I just think he was crazy. I, I mean, he wasn't crazy like, you know, well, just banging no, off on a loony you know, you know what I saw? it? I saw it as here was a guy who he had a dream. He saw a dream. And he went for it. And even though... Well, he like, originally wanted to be in the... The, the Olympics. He just wanted no, to be in the No, but he wanted to be in the team Olympics. of all the, all the guys doing, I guess, I'm, I'm going to assume sk- ski racing. Or, or I don't even know what they were doing. <coughs> but he didn't make it into the team. So we found something that they had no choice but to get him in. 
And then they told him he had to jump a certain distance before they'd allow it. And, and they picked a number that he could do. Eventually, he did it at the last minute. Minute. No, they tried to do a number that he couldn't right. do. Right. But then in the like last thinking minute, there's no way that this guy could reach that goal. I think the number was 61. And it was, was 61. And he was jumping like 35 at that point. Exactly. Whereas the record so holders... So they, they probably knew, like, oh, there's no... Let's set it at 61 because they didn't have at that time because there was never anybody from the UK doing it. They just created this number. Right. When the guy said he should have put 71. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because he, he got exactly 61. But... Isn't it at the end? Didn't he get the seven? Let's not give it away. Oh, okay. Well, well. Anyway, I still saw he it had as the a guy who he had, had a the dream. record all the time through the movie because no one else had a record. Yeah. Because I remember everything he did, they're like, and that's a British record, and that's his personal best because it always was because no one had ever fucking done it. If he did four meters, it would have been a record. Yeah. But, no. but I mean, I just got like you know. I don't think his like his father like in the show was not very supportive of it. Okay, because I guess they figured, I mean, he figured, you know, like, this guy doesn't have this talent for it. I mean, look how old he was doing it. And that's when they were, they were well, saying, he wasn't like, that when old. you're six or seven years old, you start. Right. You start, that's when you're supposed to start training. Well, his father was a Here dick. You are. His well, father was a dick the whole time. He was just very unsupportive of He him. just, you know, Eddie wanted to be in the Olympics. He didn't really even say what for. He just said, I'm going to be in the Olympics. I don't care what it is. I'm going to be in the Olympics. Yeah. But, I mean, it just goes to show you, like, his mom was very supportive of him, and he was just determined that he was going to do it. Yep. So, I mean, I think it gave a really strong inspirational message to people that if there's something that you want to do in your life, don't worry about... I'd love to know how much of that movie was, you know, written for comedy value versus what actually happened. I wonder if, if most of it is is true and they just... Because the British stuff has a lot of dry humor and there was a, so much humor in that stuff, man. So much humor in that movie. It was hilarious. Well, I think if there wasn't any kind of humor, it would be kind of boring. It would be more like a documentary then. Yeah. I like a good documentary. Though. I'm a fan of a good documentary. Yeah, I like a good documentary too. Yep. So much fun. That movie was good. You yeah, should it check was. it out. I think they, they put comedy in it, too, because it had, like, British comedy in it, though. You know, like, you watch some of these older British comedy movies where the Americans just don't get, just don't get the humor because it's very dry. I'm trying to remember. There's a lot of sarcasm. There's a lot of shows. I mean, e even look at Monty Python, but that was huge over here. You know, Monty Python was totally dry humor. Yeah. Look at Life of Brian and uh, the Holy Grail. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd think that Americans would be like, I don't fucking even know what fucking they're talking about but uh now anything goes <laughs> yeah well you know, you know people understand it because yeah. there's more british people over here you know exactly but uh and it all started with you i can <laughs> yeah that i have to bring you over here yep <sighs> he's very popular Lee's twitter's going fucking ape shit people are tweeting all over the place Great. It looks like um, they're, they're glad. They actually liked the interview, which is good for me because, you know, it could, it could have been like, what the fuck is this guy doing? You know, so I'm actually happy that they enjoyed the interview. We were trying to get another guy on, um, but we couldn't get a hold of this one guy we wanted to do. Actually, two people I was trying to do. One was the, the guy, what was his name? The guy that punched Jared Fogel in jail. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if he can call the show. He's in Prison. You can Prison. Call. We'll give him, We'll send him. I five. don't think they're allowed to. Yeah, they are. To they make are. phone calls. They yeah, get they like are. one phone call or something, don't they? Like, <laughs> no. don't they have like time limits of when they can? They use get cards. Phone? They get cards. And oh, so you're gonna send him a card? For, <laughs> for, to get him on this show, I'll send him a ten dollar card, even if it's only for ten minutes. I just want to hear him. And, and you know what? You're gonna become his bitch, and he's gonna be telling you, now send me more, <laughs> send me more cards. Or, or what? I'm gonna <laughs> or what? He's gonna find you when he gets out of jail. <laughs> he, the question is, did he punch? Gonna have his way with you, Paul. Did he punch Jared Fogel in the mouth t for the notoriety? Because you know they're saying that he's shoving this report that he's you know he's getting charged for around the jail and like, hey, check it out, I punched Jared Fogel in the fucking face. Well, first of all, I've always heard that inmates do not like anybody in jail who has hurt or done anything towards a child. <laughs> okay, they don't like child killers. They don't like child molesters. Okay, I mean, look at Jeffrey Dahmer. 
He never made it. Because you know what? All Did Jeffrey killing, Dahmer even do kids? I don't remember. He killed and ate kids and stuff. Did he? I, yeah, I, I, like I, teenagers and stuff. Uh, I didn't know that was, it was actually He lured kids. them. Yeah, teenagers. I didn't know it was actually kids that he talked to. Well, not like, I don't. I don't know as far as little, little kids, but he definitely brought some teenagers up to his place and killed them. Crazy. It is. Fucked up. <clears throat> Again, it's a fucked up world. Yeah, but I, why isn't Jared in, um, in like, protective custody? Because that may put all the kitty fiddlers, unless this guy was in protective custody right next to him. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm sure he's, because of his, uh, you know, notoriety and who he was or being someone famous. They probably have him in a more cushier type of prison. I don't think he's in a cushy fucking prison. They don't put no kitty fiddler in a fucking, they don't put him in a first fucking. His l- lawyer is going to make sure that he goes somewhere. His lawyer is not going to be able to do shit. He's lucky he got that deal. You know the prosecutor's like, fuck him, let's give him 100 years. And the lawyer's like, <coughs> the only reason that they gave him, the, I think, was it 22 years or 15 years? I don't remember what it was. I think he was getting up to 22 years, but they gave him 15 or Yeah, 16. and how much does he have to serve? 15, I don't think there's a parole thing on it. Oh, there isn't. I don't remember. But um, they just want to save the money on the case. I don't know. All I know is if anybody ever touched any of my daughters, I'd kill them. Well, don't say that because even though everybody knows that's true. Well, I mean, I think any parent would say that. Yeah, but you don't want to do that. That's and not saying that I'm... A, w- a week later, so, some guy's dead, and you're like, I never would have said that. He got 15 years, and that was a negotiation. Because they, you know, a case a, a case would cost... Did fucking... his wife stay with him? Did you know that? If his wife stayed oh, with him Oh, she fucked not? off pretty quickly, I think. I don't blame with her. With all his subway money. I don't blame her. You know what? I don't know. I wonder if, if she took the money, if they have to give it back. Oh, God, I fucking hate commercials. Ah, uh, there's a commercial. I'm just reading. It says here he got 15 years and eight months. Mm-hmm. Um, he can get parole in 2029, which is 13 years. So he has to do 13 before he gets parole. But then he wrote that letter to that woman uh, saying that it was all his friend. Um and I'm trying to find a fucking... Nevada. But didn't you tell me that his friend who supplied and stuff like that, a lot of it was even, like, his own kids? I don't know if it was his own... I mean, it really doesn't fucking matter whose kid it is, but... Still, it's sick. He wrote a letter to some woman who used mm-hmm. to... Some woman used to hook up with him a few years ago while he was married, I guess. And he wrote her a letter from prison, and this is going to fucking play music again. Why would he... Why would he do something like that unless he deliberately did it so that, you know what I mean, she could post it or? We had a good time. He was, like, really generous. He took me shopping, paid for everything. He even paid my rent and gave me gift cards. How old was she? Uh, doesn't say. Uh, she tried to reach out. When he got, we went to jail. I wrote him to see how he was doing, and he wrote back and sent me the letter. It was kind of horrifying. Um, I'm trying to find the. They, oh well, that'll post. give him. It's been some a really hard. It's been a very hard nine months for me. I made a couple of mistakes, but nothing like the media reports. They are making me look like some kind of monster, which is not true. I'm currently appealing my prison sentence, and I'm hoping for the best with it. Bottom line: my director of my foundation and friend did some bad stuff and tried me throw throw me under the bus with him. Which is bullshit because they found the shit in his house. Unless the other guy planted it. If it was on his computer. Um, and he wrote this woman, are you dating anyone? I need you in my life. I thought a lot about you over the years and had no way to contact you. Oh, that's nice. Yet he was married. That's nice. It, she said that he has email access, I guess, through the card thing that you can buy email access yeah. in the prison. And... Uh, they had a few emails, and now she doesn't want anything to do with them. I don't blame her. Yeah, but why would she fucking reach out to him in the first place? Would you fucking reach out to some guy you used to hook up with that just got sent to jail for child porn? Uh, no. That's what I'm saying. Yep, so. Uh, maybe just out of curiosity. I don't know. 
Either that or maybe she thought she can cash in somehow. If she communicated with him that maybe he would. Well, maybe you know, she sold that letter to the That's TV. what I was going to say. Spill the beans a little bit more on what happened. You know what I mean? Thinking that maybe he would open up to her. So another movie we watched was How to Be Single. What did you think of that one? How to Be Single. With Refresh Rebel Wilson. So the one with the Australian blonde, large girl. Oh, my God. That was hysterical. You like that? Oh, yeah. I like that. That was a good movie. That was funny. Anything else you want to say about I, it? I love. Well, no, I just, I just loved her as as an actress. She's she's hilarious, um, but I guess I don't know. It's a good girly flick. You enjoyed it. Well, I mean, it was a girly I like flick. I like I like comedy. It was, I like it that. Was she's comedy. A, she's funny. There was she's a lot funny in that fucking Elizabeth McCarthy. Uh, that fucking new Ghostbusters movie is going to be an abortion. Oh my God! What well, a piece you know, of that's shit a, that's gonna but be. But then again, that's another movie that we were talking about before of a remake. Why remake? Well, you know why that happened. That right? was really good, you and know, then of course not with the with the. Do you know why that movie happened? Why? Because I think it was Bill Murray who wouldn't do another movie. Yeah. So they said. That's what I'm saying. So you gotta said, have Fuck Bill you, Murray. And they made in. So with. why? Why would you do another <laughs> movie without? Him, Dan Aykroyd. Because I mean, like like Lee was mentioning it, it's the fucking name. It's the name Ghostbusters. You could put... Do you know what I just saw? I didn't watch it yet, but someone sent me a link. I, they just put out this straight-to-DVD movie. i got to fucking tell you the name of this bullshit. Hold on, let me find it. It's another sequel. Where is it? This, here. Check this, bollocks. Kindergarten Cop 2 with Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> that was like what? what? The original one was with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, why are they doing? I don't understand it's why all they about do the these name. movies. But you, you're right. I mean, that's like if they did Rocky Horror over again. You know, that was so huge. I would fucking hope they didn't. Do I that mean, either. it's like Wizard of Oz. Like I said, that was a child movie that I I watched like growing up. You know, for me to see them redo that. Well, Dolph movie, Lundgren. What's the last good film that Dolph Lundgren did? <coughs> Him and Roger Howard. What the fuck have they even been doing? I don't. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm gonna look for the list of Dolph Lundgren. Well, I guess he was in The Expendables, but before that, he was in fucking Universal Soldier, Rocky Four. Oh, my God. He's got, like, fucking 15 movies that he made last year. He's it just black. goes to show you, and I haven't even heard really that much of them, so they can't be all yeah, that great. Exactly. But, I mean, uh, Expendables is something. Mm-hmm. He was in some TV show called SAF3, whatever the hell that is. Uh Expendables, Expendables, Expendables. Uh, Maybe that's what you should do. You should take sequels. me out to a, a, a movie this weekend. <coughs> since my girls, since my girls are busy. He was in the Fat Slags. That's funny. Really, I didn't. Fat Slags is a, an action movie uh, based on books. Viz comic from England. The Fat Slags were two cartoon characters. Remember the the girls that would go really drunk and they eat kebabs and puked everywhere. Yeah. In the comic book. Yeah, they made a live version huh. of that. I don't know what the fuck. It, uh, I never watched it. I have the movie, but I know. You know those movies you get and you're like, ah, oh, I'll watch that one day, and then you never do. Nice to see you paying attention and just. Oh, no, my, I'm sorry. My daughter just texted me. Well, she could wait. We're doing a fucking radio show. Hey. She made you late already. No, this is Nicole. Ah, oh, whatever. My firstborn. Okay. That makes a difference. It makes a five minute Yeah, difference. it does make a big difference. He was, to me. Dolph Lundgren was great in Dark Angel. Great in Dark Angel. See, you are more of a movie buff. You never saw Dark Angel? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I it don't was know. 1990, so. And then Rutger Howard did, um, what the fuck? He was in Blade Runner, of course, but it was a really good movie he did in, in the 90s or the late 80s. What the fuck was it called? The w- I don't know, but you're swearing. An it ended, lot. it Can ended, chill with the cursing? it ended off with, um, some terrorist with, uh, uh, hand grenade in his mouth, and I think he was like a bounty hunter, and he uh, was getting paid. He'd get paid more if he brought the guy back alive. Yeah, that's what it was. And the end scene of the movie, where the fuck is it? I'm trying to find the list. Uh, the Hitcher was great too. Oh, the movie's called Wanted Dead or Alive. Great. Oh, okay, I've seen that. Great Wanted movie. Dead or Alive, I've seen that. The end scene, he, he pulls the, the pin out of the hand grenade uh-huh. and says, fuck the bonus. And then everybody scatters and the guy's head blows off. But uh, he also did a movie. Um, what was the movie? A oh, Blind Fury was funny too, where he was a blind guy doing it with like a ninja ninja sticks, but he was blind. That was pretty funny. 
Wedlock was a good movie too. That was the one where they had they picked two prisoners in a jail and they put a collar around them, and if they got too oh, far apart, me. it would blow their heads off. So when they escaped, I don't know what kind of movie you watched. Some really <laughs> weird. This was the early nineties. This was big. Called Wedlock. You know what? In the nineties, I didn't have in the early nineties and stuff like that. I didn't have time. I was raising Lauren. <laughs> I didn't have time to sit down and watch all these movies and stuff like that. I was chasing two little kids around. You didn't have time to watch TV? Am I a big TV watcher now? I don't know. No. I'm not like a huge TV watcher. Like, I have to really, really like something. How do you know if you like it if you don't watch it? Well, that's what I'm saying. In order for me to get, like, stuck or glued to the TV, I have to really enjoy it. You know, all right, and I'm like a lot of like the HBO series, like love watching them, yeah, love well, watching drama series, we'll love watching. You know, Girls just finished, right? I don't think that's coming back. So that was a good show on HBO. Girls. Well, what we're watching, Skins, is great. Skins is on HBO, though. Skins is British TV. Yeah, I know that. I'm just talking about the type of series. Skins is great. They made a remake. I actually made an American version of that, I think, and it sucked balls. When we were watching the In Betweeners. That was awesome. Yeah, again. And what about Bed- Bedlam? Well, no, not Bedlam. Wait a second. Um, Benidorm. Benidorm. That's right. Benidorm. 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 It's a place in Spain. That's right. That Be- that Bene- series Benidorm. is hilarious. Benidorm is a, bu- is a bunch of people that go to an all-inclusive res- a restaurant, all-inclusive hotel, hotel, where everything's included, including the alcohol. So you can just you just stay there. You can go and walk around, you know, the area, but you, everything's free in the hotel. So right, and the funny and the up. funny part is like the the manager of it, right? Is trying to get it to be like this, like four star, four star it's but a yet shithole. it's a shithole. Yeah, it's, a shithole. it's like a, a a shithole, but yet she's like got the mentality, you know, and goes around and and talks like real posh and and, and stuff like that when the place is like really. Um, one of the stars, the guy, the husband. He's from a, a British TV show. Oh, what the hell is it called? Um, well, then there League was of Ext- League of Gentlemen. Right, and remember, don't remember forget. he dressed. There, were, there was like four or five guys on the show called the League of Gentlemen, <coughs> but they they played the whole village. So all the women were them, all, all the different characters right, were them. I, I know the what postman, you're talking about. Yeah. Right, they all played different. characters. And it was very yeah, dark. The same people. It was very dark. Like there was one little village shop with the woman was him as well. And uh, are you a local? Are you a local to the village? I don't know you. Are you a local? So like, every, they was did that like, the, the one that was like really like she looked like a real ugly looking yes. woman with like the ugly teeth yes. and and then there yeah. was then the other couple they were killing people in the basement of the house. Right. Yeah. Well, the the guy that rented the room, remember, and they, they were going to kill him too. Yeah, I I just thought it was really funny with the. It's a great show, but it's really couple. fucking dark. Dark show. League mm. of Gentlemen. Oh my god, it's funny. I, uh, I like I like comedy. Another sh- another movie I watched was called Special Correspondence, which had Jim Norton in it. It was a Ricky Gervais movie. Mm-hmm. On it's on Netflix. Pretty funny. Oh, was that like the, the clip that you showed me of yeah, Jimmy? Jimmy dressed as a trans as, as a, a trans a, no no trans yes a rent boy a rent boy a rent boy. <laughs> and I got a, I got a copy of it. I didn't know you speak French. No, I wrote that because I got the French version of the movie, and I cut that clip. And I posted it on Twitter. Oh, okay. Because my well, I knew gonna, I heard it My somewhere. Twitter's going to get shut down now because I posted four seconds of a movie. Uh. With Jim Norton speaking French, obviously dubbed over. It was pretty funny. I can speak French. Another show I'm watching is called Raised by Wolves. And uh, it's called Wolves because it's in Wolverhampton in England. It's, it's a little funny. It's like a poor family mm-hmm. living in a house in England, a council house. It's another show that's out there. There's a lot of out there shows in England that, you know, but the best part about them is that every... That's because sh- nothing for nothing, but English people, they're just... <coughs> you know what it is? Is Every show in England... They're bombs. That's on after 9 o'clock. It's like HBO. Yeah. It's all uncensored, so you can say what you want. So it's like the in-between is you could say anything you wanted. It's fucking great. Great show. So is there anything else, or are we going to, like, call it a wrap? I don't know. You've only been here 20 minutes, and you want to... Ca- what do you mean I've only been here 20 minutes? I've been here since a little after 8. I wanted, quarter after 8. There's so many things I wanted to Two get hours. to. I made. I started making a list of all the shit I wanted to get to, but then Lee called right away, so I couldn't... Well, what, what happened to... A 20 to, 20 to, to 8. And, and Big A. Oh, uh, fucking lazy... F- Big A didn't even answer me back. He's probably not got any money to go out, but he's probably driven to Anthony's house and used, paid all the tolls and gas. 
But he, he can't be out of his house. Hey, no, 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 none of that. Let's he can't not, be out of his house because he has to look not after bash someone. Nobody. He has to look after someone. Come on. But he can go let's somewhere. Let's not bash nobody. He was online fucking 11 minutes ago, and then he didn't fucking reply to me. I texted him, I Facebooked him, I Twittered him. That's okay. We we did fine, <coughs> did we not? Did we not do good? I did. At the start. It was nearly abomination. At 7.40, I had nothing to talk about. And I was like, how the fuck am I going to well, start Well, first of all, you never even open the show at 7.40. It's no, always, I you meant start I had the 20, intro at 8. I had 20 minutes to figure out what to talk about. I wasn't going to oh. just go on air and go, ugh. Ugh. I'm surprised you even were able to talk with your voice. My voice has been better. I meant to gargle with salt water, but I never yeah. got around to it. Well, I just been. I must have taken 85 Tylenol. Just take your there. allergy pills. That'll help. I don't even know where they are. I told you. I was going to take the Claritin D, but apparently you, you don't get hard ons, and you know that 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 fucking one day I take the pill would be the day that you're like, okay, fuck me, <laughs> and I'll be like, uh, can I use my hand? Can I fist you? <laughs> no, so I fuck Claritin D. I think even Jimmy said on, on his show that Clarendon D stops you getting a rod. Well, at least I learned tonight that I'm a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're bi. That's, you're bi. Don't fuck with my fantasy. You're bi. Oh. You're not a lesbian. No, no, no. I'm a lesbian. Yeah. All right. Now you can shut the fuck up because you finger popped yourself before. and you've made I, finger- I don't know if I ever finger popped myself. Oh, no, please. seriously. I don't because I don't, I don't need to really touch myself oh. in order to come. I don't. So what do you do? Fucking run it up and down. The, like, Don't you know what I? You, you squeeze your legs how long, together. Wait a second, how long have you, you squeeze known your me? legs together and think of my cock, and then you come. Right? Well, Say yes. I yes, I can squeeze my legs together. Oh, there you yes, go. I can come, but oh, thank I'll you never tell you what I'm thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I don't want to. Bo- you don't boost your ego that bad. You're you're already oh narcissistic. All right, you want to get get done with us? Yeah. Oh, anyway, the other guy that I wanted to get on was was a guy from American Truckers. Um, he's in a war with someone uh, about a meme that was made of him. And it, was, and it isn't even really that bad, I don't think. And the memes, like a picture of him, mm-hmm. and it says at the top of it, uh, you're never a real trucker until you've, and then at the bottom of it says, hit someone, throw a bottle of piss out of the window of your truck and hit somebody with it. <coughs> Words to that effect, I juggle that up. But uh, apparently it's on the news in Florida. Well, it made I the news. Be pissed a little bit. But it made the that. fucking news, that thing. Where Have you seen all the memes that are going around? Have, have you, Bill Cosby would have a fucking, uh, you know, Bill Cosby could sue fucking a million people because all, all they do is talk about rape on his sweater and fucking pills and, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. Let's end this. Right. Me, thank you so much. Yes, let thank me, you so much. Let me look we had such a wonderful time talking with you. Yeah, even though you missed half of it. Will you stop it? I did <laughs> not miss half of it. I missed like what, 15 minutes of it? I don't know. I'm sorry for traffic. Yeah, she'd have left on fucking time. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Be nice now. Yeah, all right. So, just those people listening, Dysfunct Podcast on Twitter, please follow us. Dysfunctional Podcast on Facebook. Dysfunctional podcast show on YouTube, and we have an Instagram, but we never do fuck all with it. You know what? I'm gonna start. We need I'll, someone I'll to come and take. No, but somebody needs to come take pictures while we're doing the show. Like Big A took some pictures a while ago, and I've been using those on the website. But I, it's gone to the point where I've used every one of them five times. I'd like some yeah, new but pictures. Can't you use the live? Yeah, feed but and the pictures walking around the sh- walking around the studio, taking pictures of us on the air is what I want. I don't want. Oh. Well, why don't you just set up a camera that goes off every once in a while? No, I want them from all different places. I want someone in here when there's four people in here, if Chris and fucking Bigger ever show up again. I want pictures well, of us I all. I think they're going to be replaced. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right, so anyway, this song is by a group I'm called... I'm only kidding, you This guys. is a group called Broke for Free. They do free music that people can use in podcasts. You can find the music on uh, free, the free music archive. You know, maybe so. we should get, like... Some of our friends who play yeah. stuff like that come in and play live. You're gonna bring them into this ship? All right, whatever. I don't care. No, uh, they could just, you know, jam us in and jam us out. Yeah. Well, I managed to sort out the copyright thing. They they copyright flagged our show because we played your brother's music. They copyright. Fla- I should say, uh, excuse me, I'm allowed to. That's my brother. I did that, and they actually released it. There you go. And then See? I got another one. Remember Jack Littman? We played his the world premiere of his song on the show. Yeah. They copyright flagged him. But he was on the show. Exactly. 
And you should say to them, I think uh, whoever we're interviewing, if they have a song, we're, we should be allowed to play it. Well, you got to be careful. How are we supposed to promote you're not what gonna, they do? If it's owned by a record company, the person coming in can't give permission. The record company has to. Oh, so I have to get permission from my brother's record company? He has his own record company. But he sells it through CD Baby, and CD Baby are the ones that came after me. Oh. Well, tell them they can beat me. All right, so uh, <laughs> I'm No Filter Paul. No Filter and Paul on Twitter. And uh, I think that's the end of this bollocks. And uh, good night. Good night. Thanks again, Lee. Yeah, thanks, Lee. Excellent show. I really appreciate the interview. Until next week, guys. Bye-bye.